This conference will now be recorded. <clears throat> Welcome everyone. Tonight is uh, September 1st. Wow. Um, Eight o'clock. We're having a uh, planning zone and commission meeting. Um, it is 100% virtual on GoToMeeting. Um, Jeremy Ginsburg's in attendance at his home. I think Fred Donight is in attendance at his home and all the commissioners are at their home. Um, we have a pretty full agenda tonight. Um, there's a bunch of new applications and a bunch of decisions to be made. So we'll try to keep it um, as quick as possible with this sense of, you know, that tonight is our first meeting in about at least a month, maybe a month and a half and Jeremy's first one back since July. All right. So without further ado, the first thing on our, our agenda is the mandatory referral uh, number two. Dash 2020, Darien Board of Selectmen, Heights Road, request for a report regarding proposed lease of a portion of the Roten Heights train station uh, parking lot to the Metro North. Um, this is a portion of the parking lot that is opposite from um, Subway and adjacent to um, the depot. It's the piece that's really directly across the street from Valvalis and whatnot. Um, we all got a draft of the um, item that was put forth. My question, Jeremy or Fred, um, what are they using it for and why do they need it? What are they building there? Well, they're, my understanding is they're not building anything there, but it really gives them a little, what they've said in the proposal is a little more work uh, room, more area to get properly distanced, if you will. So I think they're trying to spread people out much more than they do in normal circumstances. And they have put in the lease uh, that it's a two-year lease, but they can get out of the lease if they find that they no longer need that space for whatever reason. So it's definitely short-term, uh, and it's in the I'll call it the area furthest away from the train station, and that's why Kate Bush has allowed them to use this area rather than a more uh, desirable area at the train station. This is the furthest away from the commuters on that side of the tracks. Where are these people using this stuff now? I think they have a number of parcels up and down the line, so to speak. So this would give them an area to work from in the, in the Darien vicinity. All right, as the letter says, and I'll get you to one second, Jim Rand. As the letter says, um, and I go through the train station parking every single day, um, there's nobody there. This morning there were 12 cars at 7, 10, 7.05 this morning. Um, it's it kind of sad, but hopefully it doesn't last too much longer. Um, do any commissioners have questions on this? Um, Jim Rands can go up first. Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the, the, the drawing uh, that was sent along is, is my way of thinking upside down. Just so I understand, uh, they're proposing to put these these trailers at the far end of the station, roughly abutting Old Kings Highway. Is that correct? I'm uh, not Old Kings Highway. Um, help me out here. Hollow Tree. Heights Road. Heights Road. Uh, it just, it doesn't go more than I think it's yeah, 20, 20 to yeah. 20 to, it's about 25 spaces from the depot so it's more it's across you can see it relative to where Citibank is and where Federal Realty is doing their work uh, it does not go nearly as far down as Hollow Tree it's a very small yeah. area if you're okay. if you're stand, if you're standing at Valvalas and you look across the street and you see the end of the train platform, it's to the left of the end of the train platform. Okay, let, let me just make a suggestion. Sure. Um, if we get anything close to back to normal, the westbound side of the station is always a mob scene. People looking for places to park, people trying to get on a platform, trying to get the plane to get the train to get into New York. The eastbound side of the station is almost nothing. 
if all they're going to do is use this to put office space, I think they ought to be on the other side. All of, if they're coming from New York by train, um, uh, which doesn't appear likely because they need all these parking places, but anyhow, um, the worst that, that happens to them is they got to cross the bridge. But there's tons of space over there and it's rarely used. So, so your idea is to put it on the post 53 side in that parking lot where it goes from post 53 down to where it narrows to a bottleneck where the building was that was just taken down? Well, oh, I, I don't care where in that stretch, but that stretch goes all the way from the Roten Avenue to Hollow Tree. Right, no, you, that's, you, you, I agree with you. That space there is 100% never used because that's dead. You can't, you have to go around, up and around in that spot. That's a good I, point, Jeremy. It, it is a good point. That, and I go ahead, Larry. Yeah, thank you. Um, Steve, I'm assuming that would that block for the people that do cut through the parking lot? No, they'd keep that gate open, I, I would venture to guess still. Yeah, I mean, right? Well, I, I did speak to Kate Bush about that because what Jim's comment was, was one of my first thoughts is put them on the other side close to post 53. Uh, and there was, if I recall, and I'd have to double check, some concern about the uh, ability to give Metro North a separate secure gated area. And I think there was a little bit of concern about any potential conflicts with post 53 where you wouldn't be able to get through because metro north will have that area fenced off if i recall that's what she said but it was a couple weeks ago i mean t the, the way that it's drawn now jim um is that it is fenced off on both the east side and the west side so they fenced in their, all their own space so if you move flipped it to the other side of the tracks you can't that gate that you're talking about larry just got shut off i with if you excuse me you can run instead of running the fence to secure the place uh let's say uh vertically to cut off access you can run it horizontally yep. and they can be secured with their own gate and whatever else they want, and people can still exit or enter that side of the parking from either Hollow Tree or Neuron Avenue. Yeah. Carrie, your mic is open. Any questions? Yeah, I mean, so how many employees do they plan on having in here and where are they currently working? Yeah, that's the same question I asked. And an why do they need fencing and gating around these mobile trailer units that they plan on? I mean, this seems like more than two years to me. I mean, I, they're connecting it to existing street water and sewer. A potential new pole by Eversource. They're going to add a new pole in. That's, I mean, it's a significant expense for a short term lease. Privacy screen? They don't have privacy least? screens at the, at, you know, in any of the, yeah. uh, I don't know. And, 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 you know, if people, you know, I know that many Wall Street firms and many banks and many, you know, businesses plan on having, you know, certain level tranches of, you know, you know essential workers in critical infrastructure are already returned to the office or never left the office, but there is, you know, I know JP Morgan and many other Wall Street institutions and different large corporations are going to start phasing in their employees starting after September. So we have to anticipate that while 90% is down during the height of the pandemic, I don't think the 90% reduction in commuting into New York City will continue. You know, I think we have, I mean, I don't think it'll go back to the peak of commuting at perhaps what it was two years ago or three years ago. Um, we have to anticipate that there will be an increase in, you know, what we're seeing now. Um, and where they're proposing is where people who don't, I've been on the parking, you know, the parking spot list 
since 2005 when I moved here. <laughs> I still don't have a parking pass. So where I have to park when I go into New York City is the exact location where they're planning to do this. This is, per this is like the, you know, if you don't have a permit, a permanent one where you do the pay per day per park. So, uh, what do you want to do, Jeremy? It's, it, it, of all the parking spots, of all the parking areas in that lot, this is the best spot. And Jim's right, this right. fills up first. I, I can have uh, Kate Bush come to our next meeting on the 15th and answer these questions. I do not have the answers to these questions. It's a fair. Yeah, it, it, I don't think it's really fair because it's, and, and, you know, to my lips, to God's ears, if this pandemic thing lasts for two years, we all got bigger problems than this. <laughs> I think that's important. The statement we would be making to uh, tie this up for two years is uh, not a good one. Not a good one. Yeah, yeah that's like throwing in the white flag. Yeah. And I agree. The the other side of those tracks makes a lot more sense. Jim, okay, I'll have Kate come in two weeks to uh, explain it. We'll put it back on the agenda then. You know, you know where the OEM trailer is, Jeremy, on the other side. I do. You know where it is. Yeah, that's where I'd stick it. You know, right? And I hear you. All right, let's keep moving on, right? we table that thing? Yep. Okay, next. Um, continuation of subdivision application number 627, landfilling, excavation and regrading application number 482, Hans J. Mendy, common trustee of the 2005 irre irrevocable Caremar Trust at 90 Pear Tree Point Road. Um, do you want me to read the whole thing or can we skip it? Everybody knows what this is. We read it once before. I'm getting no. Yeah, okay, go great. Go ahead and skip this. This, this is the, the old Pear Tree Point School that has an a application on the table to subdivide it into four lots. Um, at our last meeting, we made some suggestions to Wilder Gleason, some questions to him, um, and he had a look back where he was trying to get the DEP, if I'm, if I'm remembering correct, to make it one communal dock versus four little lots. Um, and now we have a new set of plans with an easement down the middle. Um, anything I'm missing, Fred or Jeremy? No, I think that was a, a pretty good summary, Steve. You know, as you had mentioned, the, the commission opened the public hearing on this application on July 28th. Uh, Wilder Gleason and Doug DeVesta presented the application uh, to uh, subdivide the previous Pear Tree Point School into four uh, several building lots, including uh, several open space parcels in compliance with uh, the Darien subdivision regulations. Uh, the original plans showed four separate dock parcels. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, Steve uh, Wilder and the applicant submitted revised plans late last week that uh, eliminated three of those four dock parcels. Uh, the single remaining dock parcel uh, would be utilized to provide access to a community dock that would serve all four parcels. And uh, tonight, again, we have uh, Mr. Gleason and Mr. DeVesta to provide an overview of not only the, the change with respect to the dock, but I think the commission also had a few concerns with respect to drainage on the site and uh, whether or how much stormwater was going to drain towards Pear Tree Point Road and how much stormwater was going to drain towards uh, Long Neck Point Road and they were going to come back with uh, somewhat of an analysis pre versus post development condition in terms of uh, those drainage considerations. And so just we'll hand record, over. I mean, just for the record we also got a letter from uh, Mr. Blackman who lives at 99 um, Pear Tree Point Road, Long Neck Point Road, I'm sorry. Um, and I see that he's at the meeting tonight, so we'll hear from him, but I think his question has already been taken care of. Wilder, take it away. Yeah, uh, Fred, you did a wonderful job summarizing. Um, we had the good fortune of getting a decision on a preliminary basis from the... Um, the hey, hey, Wilder, can you get closer to your mic? Oh, sorry. 
Um, is that better? Yeah, it's a better? little better. We should, yeah, we should have tested you. Last time I think you used um, headset. I, just, how's that? Is that better? It's still slightly muffled. While there is there a way that you can move it closer to your? I think what I think what you did last time is move the mic a little bit closer, and that I've, helped. I've increased the volume. Can you hear me now? Is this better? Um, is that better? It's a little better. We can go. But what Doug DeVest is going to lead the charge, so we can listen to him too. All right. Um, add a screen, Fred. Um, yep. Can you hear me or not? We, we, we can make you out well enough. All right, so um, the DEEP just approved a single parcel with an expanded dock, which would work for all four lots. So we modified the plan to provide a single dock parcel and eliminate the open space between the southerly lots uh, that front on uh, Pear Tree Point and Long Neck Point Road. Uh, Doug, can you pull up the plan? Yeah, I haven't gotten plan. control yet. It hasn't come up yet. Fred, could you give Doug control, please? There we go. There you got that, Doug. Yep. Okay. Sorry, Wilder. Okay, when the plan comes up, you'll see. Okay, this is the new plan, and you can see that the lots one and two, which are the northerly lots, are separated by open space. And there's a 10 foot wide pedestrian easement that we now have leading from lot one, uh, two, and three, which put on Long Neck Point Road down to Pear Tree Point Road. And at the end, near Pear Tree Point Road, we have a 15 foot by 30 foot parking area for golf clubs. And that would be expanded. And the um, uh, that's larger so that we can park a couple of golf carts down there as needed. Um, the, uh, the parking area is directly opposite the 70 foot wide dock parcel which encompasses the existing stone wharf. And we are applying to the DEEP for upgrades for that so that it will have a nice concrete platform and appropriate storage for um, some kayaks and paddle boards and things like that. And then a, a pier that leads out to a larger float. The float is going to be 250 square feet and once we get that approved by the Army Corps and the DEEP, we'll, back, we'll be back to you for the details concerning this dock parcel. In the meantime, we have more open space left over in the waterfront parcel. And the DEEP, as a condition for approving what we're calling a shared dock here, wants us to agree that no portion of the remainder of the waterfront parcel can be used for a dock access in the future. We're happy to do that because we got a larger dock that's going to work for our four lot subdivision. And so as the, PE, uh, as the commission suggested, we now have a pedestrian access with golf carts provided. Um, and a portion of that pedestrian access will be in the open space that is in the main lot. That's between lots one and two. Doug, can you call that out, please? What was that again? Wilder, which one? Um, the open space where there's uh, the pedestrian easement in the southern end on the main parcel. Right here, this. Space, right. In the southern end of that, there's five feet of it that is a pedestrian easement. It's 10 feet wide, five feet in the open space and five feet on uh, parcel lot three. So that um, lots one and two owners can get down to the dock parcel. Um, 
you will note also that our um, conceptual site plan includes on lot four a retaining wall for the driveway that is actually located within the um, easement area. We recommend that you stipulate that that not be allowed because the final plan that we submit will remove any retaining wall from the pedestrian easement. Um, and uh, let me just see. Um, the dock parcel itself will be shared ownership. We believe each of the four lots would own a quarter of it, and they would share in the maintenance and uh, carrying costs and taxes of that dock. Um, details of that can be provided as part of the subdivision filing, if you wish. Um, we are still providing a full 10% of open space, and those are two parcels north of the dock parcel and south of the dock parcel along the waterfront, and the single open space parcel that is between lots one and two. Doug, can you point that out on your site plan? And it goes up between the northerly neighbors, as we had indicated earlier. It's a weird configuration, but um, that makes sense for us to do. Doug, do you want to take it away and address the commission concerns about drainage and uh, stormwater issues? Sure. sure. For the record, Doug DeVesta. Um, so again, this is our site plan um, that was revised based on what Wilder's talked about, showing the easement, uh, the dock parcel, and the um, open space area. Uh, we were asked to look at the um, how much runoff is going towards, because there were some issues that some oh, commissioner brought up some issues about flooding on Pear Tree Point Road. Um, so what we did is we did an analysis. This blue line that you're seeing right here is the approximate um, watershed break um, for the property. So anything to the east will flow towards Long Neck. Anything towards the and the to the west flows out towards uh, Pear Tree Point Road. And what I did is I did a comparison of the um, existing versus proposed. This is the existing condition. There's there's the the uh, watershed line for pre pre development conditions. Um, everything you see in the dark color is the driveway, and the reddish color are the buildings. You got the three buildings, and you had a little cottage down here. Um, so what I did is looked at the comparison of the pre versus post uh, pre development the parking. The driveway parking area is about 29, almost 29,000 square feet. The buildings about 12,000, get about 41,000 square feet of impervious areas flowing towards Long Neck Point Road. Um, in the post development, you've got lots one and two, the, dr the driveways around 66, conceptual uh, roof areas for one and four, 6,500, and then for the pool areas, 2,300, and the walkways about 1,100, about 16,000 square feet. So you have, um, so we, we're reducing the impervious areas going towards um, along that point road by about 24,000 feet. Doug, Doug, you mean Pear Tree Point Road, don't you? Pear Tree, Pear Tree Point Road, I'm sorry, Pear Tree Point Road, about 40% less impervious area going towards um, Pear Tree Point Road. Um, we were also asked to look again, getting regarding the flooding over on Pear Tree Point Road. We were asked to, how many how many storms of an inch or better uh, do we get in, in within a year? So I looked at it from August 20, August of 2020 to August of 2019. Um, and as you'll see, the areas that are blocked off are one inch or greater. And I compare them out. So here's here's a summary of the chart. Um, anything greater than one inch, you can see we had um, you know one inch or greater. We have one, you know, one and two, one storm like in um, August and in um, in um, July, and then you can see you only have a couple storms in October of 2019, we had two storms of two inches or greater. So the majority of our rainstorms, as you can see, are, are anywhere from a half inch and less. So you can see the number of storms here um, showing that we have less than a half inch of rain. And I think the question was, you know, is our, because again, we're, we're in the lower reaches of the uh, watershed, because um, we're along, along Long Island Sound, we only need to do a water quality volume calculations, and that's what we're providing. Um, so again, we feel that the majority of the rainstorms within the last year um, were well below the one inch storm. We had a couple of inches, a couple of storms that were over 
uh, an inch, as you can see here in October. We had two storms, uh, two and a half inches and a two inch storm, but most of them are just a little over an inch. Uh, here's another one inch storm in April of, la of last of this year, but most of them are right around an inch, inch and a half inch of rain if we do get a rainstorm that much. So if it does rain, does fill up those systems, they will bubble out of the top. They have some overflow on it and that will drain down towards uh, Long Neck, um, excuse me, um, Pear, Pear Tree Point Road. Um, and we've also, we, we checked um, after the meeting last week, we did check with uh, Darren Ostafine um, if there's any issues of flooding, they known flooding on um, Pear Tree Point Road, and he was unaware of any um, flooding issues. Uh, this is a photograph looking um, from the south, looking north, going towards Rings End Road. Um, there's the cottage. This stump here, uh, just a little beyond that stump is where the parking area would be for uh, the golf carts from the pedestrian pathway coming down. Uh, the next photograph here is taken from our south east southwest corner of our property looking down uh, towards uh, Pear Tree Point Road on the curb. There's no curbing on this road. It's all sheet. It's all ground. So water does sheet flow uh, towards the um, uh, Darien River. Again, there's another picture uh, looking towards Rings End Road with the uh, parking area for the cart, cart path there. Again, this is the catch basin that's on that curve. Um, there is no curve, there's no curbing on here, so any water that does not get into the catch basin will sheet flow off into the um, shoulder and down towards the river. Uh, there is uh, the outfall, of this pipe is clear I, as a photograph of that as well. Um, again, this is looking down on the east west side of um, Pear Tree Point Road past our property, which is on the left hand side where my truck is. That's the, en that's the entrance, the uh, Pear Tree Point Road entrance to the um, to the parcel current here this you can barely see Doug, it but this is Doug, can i ask you a quick question back on sure. the last picture just to make sure we're all on the same page this proposed you know golf cart parking lot is on the other side of the wall it's not on the road side of the wall we'll be taking the wall down we'll be removing this portion of the wall and then yeah. making Making a flat area in there for the for the cart path, not on the town the property, be yes. all on our property. The answer is yes. The parking area is on our property. It's not on the right of way of Pear Tree Point Road, and we will just be removing a portion of the wall to provide pedestrian access to cross to the dock park. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no parking lot on the what's that? The it's no parking lot on the west side of the wall. The parking lot's on the east side of the wall. Exactly. Correct. 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 Shown on the plan. Okay, that's fine. Correct. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. So, so this is the this is I'm down, I'm down my back facing the river, looking up towards um, uh, Pear Tree Point Road. This area right here, this is the outfall from the storm drainage system. Um, there's a catch basin. Let me go back up to the site plan here. I can point out. Um, so there's a catch basin just a little bit um, uh, north of the uh, proposed parking area. See, this shows that the parking area is all on our property, on the east right, side of right. our property. So there's right. a catch basin there and here, which flows down to another, another, set, of catch, another catch, set of catch basins and then across the street. So this is the outfall right here of the uh, catch basin uh, drain system on, Pear, on uh, Pear Tree Point Road with that catch, that picture I just showed you. I got them. So, so that's so that's the so that's the outfall right there. And this last picture here, uh, demons. This is the uh, Pear Tree Point Road entrance to the property. Uh, as you can see, it's a straight shot up towards where the the uh, school buildings are. And there's a curving along here, and there's no catch bases on here. So all this water sheet flow down towards uh, Pear Tree Point Road into the road into the catch base train system and then out towards the river. Um, and as we as we mentioned earlier. Our proposal is to um, provide stormwater quality uh, drainage that collect roof leaders, uh, drainage from the uh, patios around the pools and portions of the driveways, and those all be captured and, and held on site. And same thing with the Long Neck Point Road side. Um, I think that answers most of the questions uh, that were brought up last time. Um, in terms of sight line distances from the driveway and from the parking area, this little bit of a curve here, there's some brush in there. 
uh, we like as, as a condition, um, provide that the owners can clear brush on our property within the open space to provide um, additional sight line distances on this corner right in here. Um, so I think that would be a, a wise thing to do. Um, and we've uh, met the requirements, you know, of the grading and filling permits, um, providing you know, the grading, that's what we're here for as well. Um, and then we asked, we asked for a waiver of section 880 uh, of, for a full drainage um, study of the property because we're on the lower reaches of the watershed. Um, I think that pretty much addresses, there's no flooding issues. So this, here's the, um, the river is well below uh, the road elevation and the property itself. The red line is the um, coastal area management uh, review area. So only a portion of lots uh, one and four are within that, um, within that area itself. Um, if there's any more questions, I'd be glad to to answer them. I've got a couple of quick questions for you, Doug. Um, sure. Relative to Long Neck Point Road, there's no flooding ever issues on that road ever. Not not that I'm aware of. No. Okay. And then looking at your plan there, lot number two has two sets of Caltech units. Lot number three has two sets of Caltech units. Correct. Right? Lot number one has got three sets of Caltech units. That's correct. Right, and lot number um, four only has one. Looks like a pretty big one, though. Correct. Correct. All right. So that's going to stop the sheet flow going down the driveway into correct. The correct. Okay. I mean, we have you have portion of the rain runoff which I took into consideration from these set of catch basins down that would be continue to flow into um, Pear Tree Point Road. Because um, once you get down lower down here, there was really, there was no room to put a uh, drainage system in there. It'd be too low, so we collect the majority of the runoff up to those catch basins and then put them into to, to the Coltec units there. Right, you're not going to send the water uphill either. No, correct. Right. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what else? Uh, one other thing that I had on the um, on Seymour zoning map is this business about. Um, the, the lot width, where like on some of them, the, the minimum lot width is 150 feet. And I guess like on lot number two, that's the average lot width or the beginning lot width is 136 feet. I mean, that's kind of a Jeremy question or a Fred question for starters. It's on their zoning table, so I'm looking at it. Right? And if you look at Seymour's thing, um, they marked 150 foot width on on three of the four lots, but I don't see it marked at the building line on lot number three. So I'd love it if you would add it on lot three. Because what the chart says, it's 150 feet at the building at the at the house. I think it's right here, Steve. Should say good again. I think it's right here. It's 150 foot. Right, right, I see it, I see the line, but it doesn't say the number 150 feet minimum square on it, whereas the other three lots do. Oh, I guess it's on the backside. I think it's right, right there, isn't it? Yeah, that's on the backside. Yeah, I can't I can't blow this up because it's on PowerPoint. No, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got, got it. it, I got it, okay. Um, so Jeremy that, and Fred, that's legal, that's fine? Yes, these are all uh, these all have areas which would be appropriately sized, and you can see on the zoning chart that they submitted, they noted specifically that there's an area for the house which has the sufficient width. So these are all okay. Okay, that's what I want to just make sure we're we're not cool. Um Thank you for the changes. I'm good at this point. Let's go around the horn and see if any commissioners have any questions. Um, I'm going to go with the list from oh this is november 6th this is wrong um larry warble any questions on this one um do you mind just have uh pulling up that screen of the current uh lot lines with the watershed line on it not the existing or proposed not yeah the existing yeah there you go so this is yeah, okay. Your, no, great. That's all. That's all. Because, yep. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of see how the uh, current impervious um, so what, what area. I, that's, 
That's the crest of the hill. That's the top of the hill is what we're pretty much saying? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. The blue line is the crest of the hill. Right. Right. This blue line is the is the is the um the divide between going right. west towards pear tree and going east towards long neck. Yep, no, I so just perfect. I just wanted to check something on it. I'm 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 fine. I'm good. Sure. I put a soccer ball at that one line. If it's on the left side of the line, it's going to go towards Pear Tree Point Road. If I go on the right side of the line, it's going to go along the point. Okay. Uh, you good, Larry? I'm good. Jim Rand? Jim Rand, any questions, sir? Uh, just a clarification. Uh, uh, Wilder, well, they both, both of the presenters have have mentioned uh, pedestrian pathway and um, golf carts. So, <laughs> is the is what we're referring to as the pedestrian pathway is intended to be used also by golf carts? That's the first part yes. of the question. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the second question, the second part of the question is at the western end on on um, Fairtree Point Road, is that intended for parking for golf carts or for automobiles? Golf carts only. Okay, thank you. And, bicycle, and bicycles. And, it's and gonna bicycle. be, yeah. the narrative said that that's gonna be a stone dust pathway. Right, okay. we will have a stone dust path which is pervious to provide good fitting in inclement weather uh, right. within the 10 foot easement area and the parking area. Carrie Gately? Great, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, I guess, um, and it, it, I don't know if it was raised in the presentation tonight, but maybe in previous evenings, and I've read them in the draft minutes that talks about the previous presentation. It talks about community dock but it's not really a community dock is it no no it's a yeah, so i think it needs to be clarified and not be not be presented as a community dock because it's not in fact a community dock carol you're correct it's a dock that is for use by the four lot owners and i apologize if that was misleading i mean it's yeah, no, I asked that, yeah i asked that same question I, Cara, I, I at the meeting. We clarified last time that that's what we're proposing. Sorry, I wasn't at that last meeting, so if that's already clarified, that's that's my bad. That's fine. I asked that. I asked if I could park my boat there. He said no. Okay, so let's not call it community. <laughs> and but how is that going to be? I don't know. I, I, and and there if there's no anticipation or contemplation of a you know, homeowners community association being associated with these four properties? Uh, or is there? We, we haven't thought through that. The only homeowners association would be pertaining to the shared dock. Okay. So there Everything is a homeowners co association being contemplated. Well, it, it may be a common interest ownership of the, the dock parcel because each owner is likely to have a 25% interest in the dock parcel and a requirement that they share equally in the cost of maintenance. And what about the walkway and the pathway? Uh, that's probably appropriate for uh, sharing, but we it may be more that that's for the benefit of lots two and three, and the details of that have not been resolved. Somebody's got to pay the taxes on that tax parcel where the dock is, and it's, you know, you're going to split it between four parties. You're going to split it between four parties. That's exactly yeah. what will happen. We expect yeah, that's the, a, we that's expect a the, the We expect the assessor will uh, allocate one quarter of the assessed value of the dock parcel to each of the four lots. He could do that. You good, Kara? I guess. I, I, I don't know. Yep. Okay. 
Uh, Larry, uh, I'm sorry, George Riley. So the dark parcel is currently a separate parcel. It's not part of any of the other four, but owned by the trust. Is that how that works? Correct. Separate tax file. And, and the oh, the open space that is on the uh, westerly side of Pear Tree Point that's shown on the uh, map here, that's all owned by the trust? Correct. So the dock parcel will be separately deeded to each of the four parcels, a one quarter interest? I, 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 it may be separately deeded or it may be as Kara suggested to a homeowners association and uh, each owner is automatically a member of that association. The details of that have not been resolved. Okay. Just, just thinking ahead to, I think it's Mr. Blackburn's uh, question or, um, about the ability of any of these owners to separately sell their interest in that parcel. They, they could do that then, I suppose. That issue would be foreclosed because we would uh, be happy to stipulate that only owners of these four lots can use this dock and dock parcel. That's not a concern or should not be a concern. So if you want, that's a stipulation we'd be happy to live with. Yeah, I'm not sure why it should be a concern to the commission, but I, I, I did hear a neighbor raise it as a concern, so maybe we'll hear more about it. But uh, the, the other question I wanted to ask was, um, uh, maybe it's for Jeremy, but Wilder certainly can answer it too. Um, going forward, once we approve this uh, four lot subdivision and the open space and the and included, et cetera, when you decide you want to build a particular residence and pool, et cetera, you likely do not have to come back to the commission. Is that right? I I believe if we have provided you with evidence that a coastal site plan review, there's only driveways located within the 100 foot regulated area and the rest of it. And that's only as the so the answer is yes. We believe that um, we have provided you with evidence from which you can approve the permit um, based on the conceptual site plan. And and staff can approve the, uh, any particular specific uh, plans you bring, is that the idea? Right, provided they're consistent with what we presented. If someone came in with a plan that had a, you know, a much larger building footprint than what we've shown, I think staff could rightly require coastal site plan review and uh, approval from the commission. But if our numbers are consistent or less than what's proposed uh, or shown here, um, it would seem appropriate for staff to be able to issue the approvals since the only thing within the coastal site plan review area is the driveway for lots one and four. And we have an opinion from Doug that the plan will have no negative impact on neighbors with respect to drainage and any filling it's located within 15 feet of a property line. And um, uh, the dock is a whole separate issue for which we must come back to you once we get the approval from the Army Corps and the DEEC. Great, thank you. No, I, no, I, I understand it better now, thank you. And, and it would seem that at that time, it would be appropriate for us to present to you how we intend to allocate ownership with the understanding that only owners of these four lots would be allowed to use that common dock, parcel and common dock. That's fine. The only thing I would say, that would be the maximum. If I want to pay you an extra million bucks to have that in my own private dock, I bet you'd think about it. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't anticipate that will happen, however. Oh, well, you think about it. Um, you all done, Wyler? All the commissioners done? Anything to add, Jeremy or Fred? Nothing to add. I would just uh, go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, I have nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wilder or Doug, I would just uh, could you please clarify the total percentage of open space provided as part of the entire development? Ten percent, just over ten percent, which is the requirement. 
in the regulation. And that includes the waterfront parcel, which we frankly could have pulled out of this and just come in with the main parcel. But our intent was to show you everything at once so you get a full uh, view of it in the three tenths of an acre that is essentially along the waterfront, um, provide some open space um, that reduces the amount we have to provide in the main parcel. Thank you. Uh, uh, with that said, I'd like to open it up to the general public for any questions or comments. And I would invite Mr. Blackburn to be the first speaker if he so desires. Am I on mic now? Yes, you are, sir. Just put your seat. Better. I would sleep better if this parcel were an association parcel because it's clearly not an acre, it's a non conforming lot. And I can see precedence with uh, Seagate and Salem Straits. But you know, I'll leave that to Waller, what makes the most sense. Uh, and and your letter that you sent to the commission on August twelfth, uh, I think it indicates that there's four lots on the river side, so to speak. That no, is been... what was going to happen. Is you're going to have yeah, you're going to have four separate mini lots that are utterly non-contiguous. Uh, two of them are non-contiguous on their point lots. I, I'm much happier with this this uh, method of dealing with. It. Okay, the, the new plan is only one lot, one usable lot on that side, not four lots now. Right. There's one lot in the middle, and then there's a, a 1A and a 1B, north and south of the other lot, and those are open space lots that are not to be used. Okay. So the way they're looking at it now is, is one, one lot that's usable on that side with one dock, and one peer, which is subject to DEP review and approval before it even gets to planning and zoning commission. No, Great. I'm very happy. very happy with how this went. Great, thank you, sir. Um, are you all set, sir? Any other questions? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, would anybody else in the general domain like to speak to this application? Do you see anybody else, Fred? I don't, Steve. Okay, I uh, we why are the you all set? Um, I just wanted to make the record clear there are numerous single, small, undersized parcels that provide dock access to owners of property across the public street. Five Mile River has many of them, a Correct. number of them are owned in common by other lot owners who are remote and not close to the dock access parcel. And in Delafield Island, you have the Reynolds, Mr. Reynolds, who owns three separate parcels, each of which shares a common dock parcel. Um, so this is not an uncommon arrangement. And we want to reserve the right to allocate one quarter of the dock parcel to each of these lots or to form an association. And we think that it would be appropriate for that decision to be presented for your review and approval when we seek your approval for the dock connection to this dock parcel. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would just want to make sure you put on the record, guys, that that we have seen this before on Five Mile River Road, where there's a house on one side of the street and the guy's dock is on the other side of the street. No less time. It's it's two it's two tax parcels. They get assessed separately. But the guy on the left side of the street pays for his stock on the right side of the street. Okay. Um, I think with that said, I'd entertain a motion to close this hearing. Uh, it's George Riley. We got a second from Kara Gately. All those in favor? Eyeball. Where's my hand? There's my hand. There's my hand. Okay. I say yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Wilder. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Uh, okay. Moving on. Um, Second one up for bid. Uh, special permit application number 310A is an Apple. Um, the Handiwork School LLC doing business as Make Modern, uh, 1985 Boston Post Road. Proposal to establish a business with craft, uh, with craft workshop classes and incidental sales of craft supplies 
within a 1,304 square, square foot single story building space, formerly occupied Puritan stationery. The subject property is located on the north side of Boston Post Road at the northeast corner of the intersection formed with the Roten Avenue. Um, it's shown as Sester's map number 42 as lot one in the neighborhood business zoning district. Um, this is a little retail building that's got Mar Mama Carmela's in it, Papa Joe's in it, and Nail Salon and formerly Puritan. Um, we saw this building on our desk um, a couple months ago, the Darren Shoe Shop moved into the old, what they call the Allstate building. Um, it has 28 parking uh, 27 parking spaces on the lot. Um, that's to the east um, uh, and eight in the back. They're kind of sort of contiguous. It's directly across the street from St. John's Church. Um, this store is there already. It's, I think it's open. Um, I know they put the sign up a couple different times. Um, and now they're just getting approval for what they want to do. Um, Jeremy and Fred, what else we got? That pretty much covers it, uh, Steve. It's a special permit use uh, in terms of the group lessons and classes. And attorney Bob Maslin's here to talk a little bit about the intensity of the use, what they propose in terms of classes, how it's all going to work in terms of drop off and parking and those various logistics. Yeah, the biggest issue with this, and Bob, I hope you focus on it, is really parking. Um, you know, and I know, I know, I know you're going to keep your comments focused. Take it away, Mr. Maslin. Okay. Um, I I just want to just see if this is working. You can hear me. Hello. Yes, yes, we, we can hear you. Oh, good. All right. And then you can see the slide that's on the screen. Yes. Uh, so that's the, uh, okay. So I'll, I'll go through the slide presentation. I've actually submitted two. Uh, one of them earlier today was our original presentation. And then uh, something came up later in the day. And I submitted an updated version with two extra slides at the very end. Uh, so up until the slide that says questions is identical on both. So here we go. Erica Allen and Gwen Matrano are here. Uh, they are attending uh, from Make Modern itself. I saw one of those little, um, if you look down the uh, attendees list, there's one that says Make Modern, and that's where Erica and Gwen are. Nicole Burkhardt is also here. Um, <clears throat> this is a business that conducts craft workshops, uh, children and teens during the day, and some evening classes for adults. And uh, yes, it's been open uh, as a result of a mix-up in what the permitting requirements were. Uh, this business previously was at 22 Grove Street, which I believe is owned by Dolman Properties. and uh, although personal service, I think this is treated as personal service business, um, for some reason, there was no public hearing or no special permit application at that location. So that was kind of led to part of the, uh, a bit of the screw up. Plus, uh, we're in the middle of COVID and this way applications are dealt with and hearings and everything changed. Uh, so here we are, uh, nothing has been happening there in the way of workshops uh, since I believe it's uh, August 21st or 22nd. So moving to the uh, slides now, this is a, an overhead view. The building itself is here right in the center. The little uh, shoe shine or shoe repair place is here. This is the old uh, so-called Allstate building. The site all the way down at the west end of it, this is the space that we're talking about right in here. It's directly across the street from St. John's Church. The Presbyterian Church is across New Rotten Avenue. And 1950 Post Road, 1958 Post Road are here. Um, let me see if I could do it this way. Okay, here's a site plan uh, that was part of the application uh, that was approved in 2014. The only difference between this plan and today is, and I've called this out 
up in the upper right, the NB zone boundary where now runs along the rear property line here. So the entire site now is, is in the zone and to the extent that activities were back here that shouldn't have been, now that's all okay, I suppose. Um, what's interesting is this site actually shows 27 marked spaces. For some reason, the variance for Papa Joe's back in 2014 um, included a variance uh, for parking and it showed 37 spaces in lieu of, I think it was 104 that would have been required. Uh, my guess is somebody must have figured out that there are 10 spaces available back in this area that are not marked. I'll show you a picture of what's back there in a, in a moment. Uh, the site is still the same, except Puritan Convenience over here on the left, unit number one is now uh, where Make Modern uh, is located. A picture of it from the corner uh, with the sign. Uh, you can see uh, some of the uh, uh, workshop participants, uh, younger, uh, children are uh, seated up here inside. This is the rear of the building. Uh, you can see parking along the right side. You have wheel stops. And then over here in the dirt area, there's some additional parking. And this is also now part of the NB zone. Uh, obviously, the, this tenant doesn't have uh, enough control over the outside of this premises to deal with the this garbage thing here. Um, I think that's more of a, a restaurant item than anything else. Uh, and um, so that's the rear. And then when you get to the back door, uh, you can see a very nice looking uh, dressed up doorway here with a little garden. And uh, after they moved in, uh, someone who walks by here frequently left this, glad you're here. Um, they painted up a little rock and left it uh, kind of as a welcome uh, gesture. Uh, this is a photograph during the evening uh, in the dark. Uh, this model block light is here. You can see this uh, uh, floodlight that uh, it's a new fixture, but the light was there previously uh, is right here. Neither of these lights shines on any uh, adjacent residential properties. This, this picture is taken pretty much from across the intersection. And uh, behind it is the school and uh, St. John's Church. This is the inside, nice and bright, well organized. Uh, the workshops occur in this space and the back is used for kind of staff and, and that sort of thing. Another photograph, this doorway here faces the post road. So that orient you, orient you uh, in that way. The classes are typically these uh, types of classes. Kids, uh, and this is arts and crafts, make your own things, uh, develop a, uh, a, a level of creativity. Um, and one of the things I'll show you in a moment, uh, so a sundress, you'll see what the kids were able to do um, uh, in a video I'm gonna show you in a minute. The teens get, get a little more sophisticated. Bob, Bob, let's get Yes. Let's get to the meat of the application. Okay. Well, these are these are the out. things that we're 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 talking about. If you want, this video is a minute and twenty seconds. Uh, I take it you don't want me to take time to yeah, play we, it. We can home, that. But yeah. you can if you download the uh, uh, PowerPoint, you can you can uh, see those. I included a slide here with the, a link to the website. If you want to look at the website, it's there. These are the classes. Now, <clears throat> this is a typical schedule. The idea here is to show in green bars when the other businesses in this building are open and how these classes fit in. They're designed so that you're not in the intense time periods of the other uses. And um, this is kind of just lays out how these uh, uh, classes work during the school year. They change a little bit for the summer schedule. 
And then here are, again, you can go through this at your leisure. Uh, this uh, business complements other art programs in the area, particularly the Darien Arts Center. Uh, there's a grade school across the street, practically, which is uh, very convenient for kids uh, after school if they want to uh, participate in classes here. Uh, the uh, important thing these days is uh, Make Modern has registered itself with the state as uh, following the COVID-19 precautions. Uh, don't let this 180 kids scare you. This is uh, 20 kids per week for nine weeks and the 20 kids per week is broken down into multiple classes. So you don't see 180 kids there at any given time. Um, and this next slide, uh, while they've been, oops, while they've been open, the parking has not been a problem. There is an informal arrangement with the Neuroton Presbyterian Church across Neuroton Avenue that will um, allow overflow parking if uh, Make Modern needs it. So that's that's the relief valve. Um, it's between Make Modern and the Rotten Presbyterians or between the landlord and, and the Rotten Presbyterians? It's, it's between Make Modern. Okay, can and, we get a copy of an email that says that? I can see if I can see if we have one. Um, I mean, it was, something must have gone back and forth. They didn't shake hands in a parking lot, did they? Well, kind of. I mean, they, they getting these agreements without having a formal contract. Is if I'm seeing they're nodding yes. We do. We, we have it. We have writing. Um, hold on. Hold on. You got to tell them who you are, whoever's talking. Um, hi, I'm Gwen Mitrano, and um, we do have written confirmation that we can share. Yes. Fantastic. If you can put that in the file and send it to staff, that'd be great. Can you, can you, Erica, do you think you can email that to me while we're doing this? And then I'll just put right it in right the record. Now. We'll that right now. Okay. All right, we'll we'll get to that, uh, Steve. By the end of the uh, that's that's the most important part of the whole thing, Bob. Okay, no, I got it. I got and it. The number of kids and the drop off and how it's going to happen. All right, let's just just cut to the chase. Okay. All right. Um, well, we need pictures. The kids are typically the classes are typically ten or so, uh, maybe twelve. The drop offs are either in the back or in the parallel parking spaces in the front for the drop-offs. Or um, what, one of the uh, things that happens here, which I think is a good uh, uh, thing to have here, is parents can come, park the car, drop the kids off, and go to another business. Go to Mama Carmela's, go to Papa Joe's, uh, go to the nail salon. Uh, that happens uh, quite frequently, so you're, you're making use of one parking space for a couple of different uh, business stops. You got a roost across the street. Now you you're, you just said 10 to 12, the exhibit says 10 to 15. What's DO mean? DO, drop off. Okay. Uh, you, you're talking about this one? No, uh, no, they, they just make better school year schedule. After school, 10 to 15 kids. After school, 10 to 15 kids. You said 10 to 12. Okay. Uh, 15. Go ahead. Can, go ahead, Erica. Would be during non COVID. Um, if and when we get back to normal, that would probably be the max we would ever have. 12 is the max. 10 to 12 is the working number now. Okay. And how many did you have at your other location at 22 Grove? 10. On, on average, eight to 10. Uh, we occasionally, just for demand, would over, over enroll to 12 or 14, maybe once or twice. What was the I, square footage of that space? Oh, a fraction of this space. <clears throat> so you had five, you had, this fragment say it was 800 square feet, and you had 10 to 12, or eight, to, you had 10? Now you yeah. double the size, and you're you're only still going to have ten. Yeah, I mean we're not we're not our issue is not space. It's how many kids you can physically teach with one instructor. It's not a space a space issue. It's an instructor okay. issue. 
a lot of what we do is technical. So um, each child, for example, would have their own sewing machine. So, you know, that's two to three staff just for 10 children um, to walk them through all the steps of sewing. So we're not sort of a mass class. Um, we do better with quality control when we keep it to a manageable number. And we and we add retail. So we have we have a retail part of our square footage is used for retail. Part of it is used for workspace in the back to prep the projects. So the the square footage wasn't the reason for the move to add kids. It was a reason to improve our location. Oh and yeah, this is a thousand times better. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of support letters. I'm not really going to go through all of these, um, but except for this one from Mr. Calandro, who's the landlord, does mention off it's pretty much a drop off business, few workers, and uh, uh, a significant improvement to the appearance and customers patronize other neighborhood businesses. Uh, and then we have uh, other. When did, it, when did it open? What? Uh, when did this open? We opened, um, I guess, say March 5th, just a few days before the shutdown. Okay. So at you've never way. been, you've never been open at this location at full capacity. No, we were at full full COVID capacity this summer, this summer. for our summer. Yeah, 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 no, not non COVID is what I'm after. We we want to get out of COVID. Yeah. Uh, okay. Never, we never had more than ten kids in a class this summer. Is that right, Lynn? Twelve. We had twelve for one or two sessions. Can I? I think there's two issues. I think that you're asking, Steve. One is the number of students at any given time versus the number of classes. The number of students at any given time gives you an indication of the intensity of use uh, and the traffic and parking and things. And if you have two or three classes with the same number of students with a break in between, that doesn't uh, create a, a major traffic or parking issue because it's spread out. Okay. Um, let's, These are, let's, ask, let's ask the committee. Are you done yet, Bob? Are you, can we just ask a, couple the more, a couple more things. Uh, we do have something back from Captain Shredders over at the police department. There are no traffic issues here. Um, I have questions here, but I, I do want to address one other thing, and that is uh, late today, we received a copy of a letter that the owner of Papa Joe sent in that is here raising a concern about parking. Um, this letter says something that is troublesome because he claims exclusive parking from six o'clock to closing which I think violates section 905. This is supposed to be shared and uh, the lease that uh, the applicant has with the landlord doesn't have any kind of time frame built into parking. It's just a standard commercial lease with- Yeah, we'll uh, get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. I okay. saw the letter. What I took out here, an excerpt from the 2014 site plan and special permit approval for Papa Joe's and it does cite as a condition an informal agreement with Mr. Carrenti. Mr. Carrenti owned 1958 Post Road at the time, which is now uh, owned by a new owner who just finished building buildings at 1950 and 1958. And uh, that owner does have an agreement with Papa Joe's for overflow parking. What that means is in 19, uh, rather 2000. 14, this yellow line encircles the parking that was available on Mr. Parenti's parcel. Since then, as you know, this these two lots were improved. The overflow parking that's available now after hours is probably about four times the size. This is roughly 10 to 11, maybe 12 spaces. I, I got that. I got that. That's why I want the letter from the Reverend Presbyterian. I got it. Okay. Sorry about something that doesn't exist. I'm sorry. You done? I, I am. That's why I want oops. the from the Presbyterian. I got it. Okay. All right. Bob, I will see we if. We sent that to you, Bob. So you should have that in your file. Okay. All right. 
let me just take a quick look at my email here. Uh, okay, why are you looking, Kara? You have any questions, Kara? I do. So I guess, Bob, I appreciate your presentation, and um, Nicole and Gwen, I really, I, I have, to, I love the space. I love the, you know attractiveness and the outward improvements. And I really do love the whole concept of your business. I really think, you know, teaching kids and adults how to make crafts the real way, sewing and doing things thoroughly and in a real fashion, not like, you know, you know, from a kid, you know, I, I really, I think it's so impressive. And I really think it's a huge addition and um, uh, benefit to the town. That being said, I do have a couple concerns. And A, you know, parking is going to be one of them. And I know I am a, a repeatedly raised parking, but parking is a concern. That area, it appears to be a very um, not ideal or extensive parking area. I mean, it's a tight spot back there. It's a very busy corner. Um, it's the post road. There's a lot of traffic. And I, I, I don't know how parents are going to drop off on the post road um, with public transportation needing to stop there, um, car, two lanes of traffic. It's a busy intersection. So I mean, that's obviously a very big concern for me. Additionally, I'm concerned about, is it drop off or do we want people to stay there and park and utilize other businesses? There seems to be an inconsistent messaging going on where it's it's drop off, but parents might stay and utilize other businesses. So either they're parking or like they're dropping off and leaving. Like we can't, you know, have this inconsistent, you know, premises being like, presented at the same time. Additionally, I guess my other concern is, okay, 10 to 12 operating, you know, since March, I know there were summer camps going on. And I do, I think a need was met for the community. And maybe there was a misunderstanding about the special permit that was required to operate this kind of, you know, activity in this space. Um, and I think it's great that it, you know, we're all trying to make and do the right thing now and get to the right place by seeking a special permit. Um, that being said, are we at, are we at lower levels now of students because of the, you know, one to one high intensity, not in high intensity, but like the intensity in terms of we need to have instructors and a low level ratio between instructors and you know, kid or adult participants learning these skills. And so we're going to stay at the eight to 10, or is it because of COVID imposed restrictions per executive orders and the, you know, Connecticut Economic Development Commission that has, you know, sent out various sector required, you know, reopening requirements and, and youth activities and different, you know, you're applying to be a daycare, I'm guessing if you're going for the 180, um, that hasn't been put in the in the presentation material, so I, I, I'm not I'm guessing, but right. So your activities and the number of participants is restricted right now, given the reopening and the phases since we haven't entered <coughs> phase three yet in Connecticut. Does that mean post, you know, once we Connecticut is permitted to enter phase three, or the different various phases and the restrictions on the number of people who can be gathered in, inside is lifted. Will Do you anticipate doubling your square footage that you will be at 20, 30 people? And then, and then the parking issue was really going to be exasperated. Can I, can I answer a few of those first? And then I'd rather okay. hear from the people that are running it. That's it. They got to know where the drop off and pickup is. I just want to mention one thing, though, if if I can. There, sure. whether there's a drop off or a park. If it's drop off, the car stops and goes, drops the child off and goes on, and then comes back, picks up, and and leaves. The park part of it, 
is a classic shared parking lot where I'm just trying to see what they're doing there. Space. I'm trying to see and what they're doing there. Businesses. And that and in that sense, those two things are not inconsistent. They can happen with different students depending on what they're parent is doing. Okay, so uh, what is the parking requirement if they're going to be at the max that they can? The parking requirement for this use under the zoning regs is seven. Seven. And the parking yeah, requirement for Puritan was also seven. One but space per 200 Puritan, square feet I don't think those customers at a stationary store stayed as long as it's anticipated these customers will. But they were a constant flow in and out. This is not a constant flow in and out. So it's a different, it's a different parking scenario. You can you can have you know uh, people coming in, dropping their child off and leaving, and nothing yeah, else yeah. happens until the end of the class. If we're trying to get dealing with a retail home. store, there's a constant flow all the time. During, particularly during the busy times. Do we know the foot traffic and the flow at, at Puritan Stationery? I'm, I, I'm sorry, I Do didn't we know uh, what the average foot traffic and flow of customers was at Puritan? No, but oh. the zoning regulation sets the seven space requirement. So- For this kind of activity? For this type of activity. For a day camp? No, it's a personal service business. Um, is it's it, how, it's, how it's being treated. Sorry, are they it's currently a, applying to the state? Not to be it's not a day camp and it's not daycare. It's not? No, I didn't say daycare. It, it, I didn't no. say daycare. I, I thought you said daycare before. I said no, camp. They oh, weren't running okay. camp this summer? If they call it camp, but these are workshops. The, the kids are not there all day like you would in a daycare. Personal services. If I can hey, answer uh, that, uh, we actually hold do. On, not Eric, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Jeremy and Fred, can you guys confirm the, the as of right parking requirement? He's saying seven. Is it seven spaces and 1,300 square feet? Right. You have section 904P, which lists retail, commercial sales and services, or personal service businesses, one space for each 200 square feet of gross floor area. And, right. and okay. Jeremy, can you go over what type of businesses are typically? under that categorization well it would be a, a wide range certainly you could get something that was uh at least in my experience the puritan was there many years but it was very low intensity mm -hmm. and believe it or not it would be treated the same way as say the apple store which would be much higher intensity but this isn't uh, really so, a retail this is retail seems right. to be an accessory use right in this case you have a mix of retail uh, as, as the ladies mentioned, there is a retail component where people mm -hmm. can come in and buy certain things, but there's also a personal service component where they're having classes. And that's why they're before the commission is these, let's call them classes or workshops or whatever we want to call them, uh, requires the special permit and would be many more people all arriving and leaving at one time. And in this case, there is the shared parking agreement in which you have these four different uses sharing this one parking lot. Do we consider yoga studios that teach people how to do yoga personal services? Yes. Okay. Can I, do you consider the nature center and the programs and workshops they run personal services? No, we would consider them uh, more of a special permit use in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, I think we call them more like, I don't want to say more like country club, but there's a, uh, a phrase in the regs which talks about so, uh, social, cultural, and recreational uses serving a community need. I okay. believe that's what we call the nature center. Okay. Okay. So, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Bob said seven spaces. It, it's 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 actually six point five two if it's one thousand three hundred and four square feet. So Bob right. was being accurate which I, I agree with you now ladies can you tell us like how you do pick up a drop off the people going through the front door or the back door absolutely how, so we, how we do you did, want them to do it how do they do it um how we did it this summer was an opportunity sort of for pressure testing so to speak so what we had was a morning session with 10 kids 
from nine to 12 and then we would clean in between and then we had an afternoon session from one to four. So each parent was, um, they would drop their kids off at the front door where our, we would meet them. Each kid would have a temperature scan and a quick squirt of a hand sanitizer and then they would come in. Um, so the parents would you know, drop them off, leave, and then pick them up at 12. We would reset, clean the space, and do the same thing in the afternoon. So we did that nine times for nine, you know, nine consecutive weeks this summer. Um, Can I stop you one second? Where do yeah. you think the, the parent parked or the guardian parked? Did they park in the front parking lot or did they park in the far side of the building? Did they park they in the rear? Us and along the side. So we okay. have behind us, we have that, that street parking lot. Um, you know, we also have people who would, you know, walk, literally walk here. Um, but, but the back is where we saw most people would park. We kept that for safety reasons with the kids. We kept the back door closed. So in our, um, welcome letter, you know, as we gave everybody information about camp, we would say, please park and walk your children to the front door where we'll greet them. Um, okay. and so that's how it ran. So they would park in the rear parking lot where all the, the, with those eight dirt spaces that are marked walk the kids to the front door, then drop them off, and then they'd leave. Yeah. Okay. Well, that worked well? It did. We also, you know, even in COVID, we had people carpooling as well, but no parent complained to us that, you know, they ever had an issue. Um, and what was nice is we we wanted to keep limit the foot traffic of people inside the studio so parents would wait outside, and we have the big windows so the kids would wave to their parent or caregiver so we knew they were there, and then uh, we would check them out at the front door. Okay, and then in, in your time was is you said nine to nine to twelve, and then in the afternoon. So you never really got into the breakfast at Mama Carmela issue or or lunch. Right. We kind of skirted right between them. Yep. Right. So a yeah, lot of times so parents might grab lunch after. You know, we saw people leave here, go get lunch, and then go. Um, we saw parents go get their nails done. <laughs> you know, we we did see some of that. Right. I mean, there's there's this the um, pure bar is right across the street and you got roost across the street and all the other places. You got plenty of stuff. OK. The other um, thing I may I just wanted to address your concern um, about our long term plans and in terms of whether we had any interest in becoming a camp um, or daycare. That is zero percent in our plans. That's not something that we are interested. In. It's not part of our business model. Um, we never foresee that in our future. It's also an extremely, um, it's a whole other set of regulations. We were actually classified this summer as summer classes. We were not um, you know, officially a camp. That's not something that we're interested in. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Okay. Um, you good for, the, for now, Kara? Can I just Mara, touch on now, one let, thing? Let the, now let the commissioners go, Bob. All right. Larry, what do you got? Yeah, you know, I'm just going to comment that I that um I, I know this parking lot very very well. I use well, pre-COVID, I use it almost every Sunday because I go to Mass at St. John's, and the line there's there's more parking than the lines make you think because there's a few nooks and crannies that you can park in, and there's a really good flow from that side lot coming out behind it and then on the road and avenue. So like even the drop off having to be on route one, it, it doesn't have to be on route one. They can go right into that parking lot, drop off, keep going straight, come out the other side. So it just it just happens to- Mama Carmela doesn't open- Mark, was not open on Sunday. I'm sorry, Karen, did you say? Mama Carmela does not open on Sundays. Okay. I'm, I'm just talking about the configuration of it. Right. right. But I'm saying that's a lower use day, right? Because one of the yeah. primary yeah. tenants yeah. No, I'm just, just, not operational that day. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm you're saying it goes in the loop. Higher, higher I'm just saying it can loop. Exactly. I'm just saying it can loop. That, that's, yeah. my, that's my comment. That's my point. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Jim Rand, anything? No? George? No, I'm fine. Thanks, Jim. George? Yeah, I uh, uh, am focusing on uh, Bob's photo two on page A5 of what we received, which is the backyard parking. And I really dislike that. I'm loath to even call it a parking area. 
<laughs> I think someone just referred to the the dirt areas as being marked, but I don't think they're marked for parking. Uh, there are, uh, you know, always vehicles there. The fact that the dumpster kind of blocking the uh, passage from one side to the other makes no sense to me. I, I also heard Bob say that, you know, this is a tenant who doesn't have a lot of sway about this, but um, I want to turn up the heat on that. I mean, it has looked this way for, I don't know, 20 years or more, and it doesn't make sense to me. It's an uneven pavement. The uh, dirt area is uneven. Kids walking around there seems to me it's it's unsafe. Um, I think it could provide very nice flow through from the larger parking area to the uh, uh, Neroten Avenue if that dumpster wasn't blocking things the way it is. Um, so. I think uh, I think more parking should be available if that would get cleaned up. And um, I want to urge uh, Mama's Post Road, which I guess owns this, and Mama's Mama Carmela's, I assume, to do something about that to make it possible for kids to be there and to walk around there without greater risk. Um, that that's uh, you know I. Parking on Roten Avenue, there are only a couple of spots there given a uh, fire hydrant, as I recall. Uh, and in the front on Post Road, there are only a couple of spots. And uh, obviously, Mama Carmela's is busy in the morning. It's busy mid-morning with coffee break folks. And then at lunchtime, and I see some of the classes are overlapping with uh, at least the early side of lunchtime for some folks and then later on. So this is this is a busy area, and let's hope we get to post-COVID very soon. Uh, and I do worry that the, uh, just the drop-off pick-off pickup is going to be uh, very problematic. So I'm, I, I don't I don't like what I'm seeing in terms of the parking. I gotta say. Okay, so it's Jerry. Maybe maybe we think about the way we handled. Um, Huntington Learning Center and um, um, and what's the other ones over there? Kuma, right? Right. The, the front door was the front door. The pickup and drop off was in the back, you know. So there was I, I don't know how we really worded that one or looked at that one at at, at the end of the day because the front door was on the post road, and most of the pickup and drop off right. in the back. Parking was in the back, you know. This is a, a similar kind of use. We we looked at the parking and that we we came up with the theory that there's plenty of parking in the neighborhood that's why i really want to see this letter from neroten presbyterian you know no one's parking to my knowledge at neroten presbyterian at 12 noon on a tuesday you know i don't think church is in session so there's got to be a gazillion spaces there yeah they got a daycare or a school there going on but if they say that you know we can park there we can park there there's a school there, yeah, I, but that parking lot is your mother's. Say again? Daycare and a school. Okay, so and that's why I want to see, that's why I want to see the letter or the email or whatever it is. Um, I mean, I sent there's a lot of new stuff in the area. There's a lot of synergies in the area. You know, there's people can walk back and forth across the street, you can park behind a bunch of stuff. You know, if by, by zoning code, they're really allowed to have seven parking only required of seven parking spaces um you know we can't make them have 27 yeah, parking Steve, i think spaces. i saw the letter across during the middle of the presentation that but what we got an email or something the email on this on, on robert's screen all right um <clears throat> I'd, I'd like i'd like to open it up all the commissioners i think spoke i'd like to open up to the general public to see if this uh, is if person's here would like to speak um, but I just want to look at this letter Bob you in your presentation you put some page out of a zoning resolution that I've not seen um, so we're going to want to see that um, because there's a little bit of a contract here so are we okay with that Jeremy or, or, or Fred did I miss anything no I don't think so Steve okay uh, <clears throat> Would anybody in the general public like to speak to this application? I don't see anybody. No one's I don't in see anyone, no. Okay. The only thing I want to talk about is is the letter that came from Giuseppe 
I can't pronounce his last name from Pub Joe's. So Rubicchio. he says he's got exclusive rights to the parking lot from six o'clock from six o'clock to closing. Prior to make modern, the shopping center space was occupied by a return. It was a very dynamic of space during time frame. So I don't know what this is. You're talking about Papa Joe's condition F. I can't see that. So we got to review that. Um, so the question is, what do you want to do, Commissioner? Do you want to close this? Try to close the hearing tonight. You want to keep it open? I'd be inclined to keep it open and see what kind of improvement can be made. Okay, I'd, I'd like to keep it open too. Um, are these guys, oh, I, Erica, I think that's your name. Are you open and operating now? Yeah, not for okay. classes, just uh, retail. Without classes, we really don't have much of a business, quite frankly. Right, school starts in three days. Yeah, and right? we have parents knocking down the doors to see when we're gonna start registering for the fall and we've been sort of holding them off. But you register okay. people for the summer. We, we did. Hey, Kate, this is Erica. I'm off screen and I apologize. You've been you've been able to visit with Gwen, who's our amazing studio manager. I'm I'm off camera because I had eye surgery on Friday and I'm an awful, awful mess. And I don't want you to, to put you through it. But <laughs> I'm, I'm the founder and the owner of this business. And and I, I, I've been listening, uh, listening to the conversation and I had a couple of thoughts. Um, that I thought might be helpful to you be before we put this to a rest, at least for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was listening to your concerns that 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 you know we, that somehow we were limited during COVID and our master plan was was yep. bigger and more. And and I can assure you that our our business planning maxes out at 12 kids. I'm the in instructor for almost all of the classes we teach. No, your manager spoke to that. She spoke to that very clearly. Thank um, you though. Uh, and and we, we were not limited. Uh, we could have, we had long wait lists to add kids to the summer. We weren't limited by the state and we just couldn't do it because that didn't lead to good classes. Not because we were, you know, some somehow more restricted. Uh, really, there was no COVID restrictions on the number of co people you could have indoors. No, there were. There, there were. There, yeah. there were, but we were right, well. Below them. We yeah. were well below them. We could have added many more kids in any given week. Right, um, and I think you spoke about that. You guys had a, you know, a ratio, a low teacher to student ratio, given the skills and the the attention that was provided to each student. That, that's right, and that's not that's not. A, COVID circumstance that no, is she, a, no, she was clear on that. I think that's a great point. Um I want to say uh, I, I mean if this if this is a story about we need to have Frank move the dumpster for us to be to be allowed to operate, I will do whatever it takes. I will physically go out there with my college age sons and shove that dumpster where it where it needs to go. <laughs> Excellent. I'm delighted to hear that. We are, I, I, and I am not kidding. You can tell Frank. I'm, Neither I'm, am I. I'll get him out of bed. But but we are we are really we've weathered COVID, but we will not weather not being able to open for fall registration. Right, that's, right that's, now, what I'm, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to hustle this thing along, and, and I get it. I mean, we've had these all the time. What we typically do is we put an upper limit on the number of kids. Right. What I was trying to get to, and I think Kara was getting the same spot, your graph that you put in said 10 to 15 kids. If 15 is the maximum number, that's fine. If if 12 is the maximum number, that's fine. If 30 is the maximum number, just tell us that. It, you know, it, we have to, we have to, something that we're going to, we're trying to work with. You know, the, whatever it is, whatever, because sure. we do the same thing with Kumon, we do the same thing with barbershops, we do the same thing with salons. You know, yes. if there's 12 chairs in the salon. You can't have 30 people in there. I mean, I you it. actually do have 30 people because there's because there's 30 people getting their nails done and 30 people cutting their nails. It's the same it's difference. So that's that's what we're trying to get at. Sure. And the only time, I mean, I can tell you, I can't teach more than 15 kids at a time. So you just give us the number, whatever but, but the number is. Let me, give, let me give you the caveat. Let me give you the caveat. Part of our business model is special events, like a birthday party. 
we would love to be able to entertain the time somebody wants to have a birthday party and invite 18 kids to that birthday party. And that is specifically why we went out to Neroten Presbyterian Church and asked them if in those occasions where we had a one-off special event, we could invite, we could have parking off-site to accommodate more kids that might not work in our typical model, but might be useful in a one-off scenario. I, I got it. I heard, I heard that was one of the ideas too, but I never really saw it on paper. If I did, I missed it. I sent the email to Fred. Well, it's, it's, I you might have sent it to Fred, but I'll, it's, I, I'm looking for it. Okay. Well, I know I did it during the hearing. We, we talked about it earlier and, and I forwarded it. No, the, the birthday party thing I was after now. No, but I appreciate, like, you know, we had a, you know, a group come back, you know, and sort of amend their special permit after they realized they had, there had been like, sort of like, you no, know, you know, inadvertent, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, Exclusion moving thing. off of or expanding, you know, off of their original special permit. So I think, you know, we're sensitive to it, but we appreciate, and that's what we're asking just for the, and we appreciate the candor and like, you know, what, what you're planning on doing and saying, here's why the number is larger than what we're saying. It's not for the classes because of how our model operates. We have a lower, you know, instructor to student ratio. So that's one thing on the classes, which puts that sort of issue to side. And then it's, we may entertain special events or birthday parties. And I think explaining that and clarifying that point is, um, is important. So I appreciate that. I'm sure it's kind of probably all the and, and to Kara's point, we can we can approve you for the classes now. If you come back a year from now and say, you know something, we you only approved us for ten. You know, we have a late list for twenty. We think we can fit in a year from now. You come back in a year from now and, and you you amend it. You know, I don't, where's the birthday party part stuff in this application? Does it say it anywhere? It says it, uh, Steve, at the top of page page A two in the first paragraph says the applicant also holds, holds private birthday workshops for children occasionally on weekends. Doesn't it doesn't say give it, a number of kids? No, it does not. Okay. So how many people do we have at a birthday party? Typically, um, an average elementary class size would be 20. So I feel like that would be our max if everybody invited everybody in the class. Um, and then how many instructors? two for 20. You know, it's okay. it's probably also worth you knowing that for a class, we have one adult instructor, and then we might have one or two assistants, but those assistants are at the most ninth grade kids or apprentices. So our, our biggest part of our staff is also being dropped off. I'm, I'm parking when I'm teaching, or Gwen or Nicole, but then our, the rest of us is skateboarding or bicycling over. Literally. Literally. <laughs> now, now uh, this is Jeremy Ginsburg. One, one thing that, uh, Bob, you've shown you in your chart, that there are certain occasions where you have classes back to back, if you will, workshops back to back with no break in between. Is, I know the commission in the past, like for example, with the DCA has dictated some kind of break in between, allowing one group to leave, get out, clear out a little bit before the other group comes in. I did that with Pure Bar too. Can I, can I answer that? So the way our afternoon classes are set up, it's a little hard to read on the chart here. So we have a 3.30 to 5 class, and then we have a 5.30 to 7 class because we also need that time to reset materials. So we have to clean up from the first class and then reset everything for the second class. So we, we do have a half hour break in between. So when you get here, there's a half hour break in between. Yeah, so it's 3.30 to 5 and 5.30 to 7. Okay, that's important. Okay. That's, that's a, a dictate of the business model. That's not a 
COVID issue or, or even a parking issue. It's just, we have to have that time to make it right. work. Well, we, yeah, we, ha we usually have it for parking. Pure Bar's got it. A bunch of different places has it, but we, we, sp we space them out. Uh, yeah. All right, so commissioners, what do we want to do? You want to keep this open to get this additional information and fast track it, or we want to try to close it tonight with all this stuff taken verbally? Next meeting is the 15th, doesn't it? That's Jim, correct. Yes. Yeah. Jim Rand, what do you say? Uh, I say close it, but let me let me uh, say the following. It seems to me that the that the three issues are. Uh, the number of people, parking, and the issue that George raised, the, the safety back back lot issue. Um, the it sounds to me like we can agree the number issue right now. We make it twenty, make it twenty five. Um, that that should do it. Um, all they have to do is to provide some sort of a writing with whoever about the overflow parking. Correct. And that's just something they can give to Jeremy. If Jeremy's happy with what it says, then then we go ahead. Um, Correct. The only other thing is the back the backyard, and I don't know how to deal with that except that the uh, the landlord wants to rent the premises. The proposed tenant wants to rent the premises. Um, if uh, if he if the landlord is prepared to give them something about either cleaning cleaning it up or relocating the dumpster or what have you, um, then I think we're there. Uh, and whether it's going to take a week or two weeks if our next meeting is on the 15th uh, to cooper all that together. Uh, I, I'd be comfortable in seeing it closed and dumping it in Jeremy, Jeremy's lap. That's it. There is, I mean, I'm thinking the same lines, no offense, George, and if one else agrees, because I'd like to give these ladies a sense of, you know, can they start to, you know, book classes? I mean, yeah. they're in the speed. I, I, I feel very strongly that way too, Steve. I we hold them up till the 15th. They don't have an answer till the 16th. You know, school starts in four days. No, we can because can't we close it and then have these one or like the dumpster? Right. I'm hoping that Jeremy. I'm hoping that worked out before we Jeremy, it. Yes, I hope Jeremy yeah. and Fred took great notes about the number of kids. Yeah. And we can we can get that in in writing. We can get this letter from the Presbyterian writing. You know, we can say that they're they're Sunday birthday parties that are after church and some odd time we have a Sunday birthday party. I got four kids. We had birthday parties all the time. My daughters would have loved to get yeah, but not Sunday morning. Send them over our yeah. way. You're a birthday. They, can yeah, I, now, can you're, now they're gonna be working there in the summer next year. Awesome. Um, Guaranteed that. That's that's the thing. I, I don't want these guys to miss a window. It, it, and if we delay it, but if they can get this stuff in all over by, you know, because we're going to deliberate it, prop, prop, now I don't think we're getting to deliberate this thing tonight, but we can deliberate it and close it and close it tonight, deliberate it the 15th and they can be rocking and rolling. But at least they can put an email out that says, you know, we're starting classes on the 21st or something. I mean, it's, it's, I, you guys agree? I certainly don't want to harm this business. Uh, I love what they've already done. I love the folks they serve. I think it looks terrific in front already, but uh, I also think they're already in business. Apparently nothing stopped them from getting into business pre-COVID. I, I, you know, nobody's throwing injunctions at them or anything else, so let them move a pace. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to have approval before the 15th. We could keep this open to the 15th and close it on the 15th and deliberate on the 15th, it seems to me and get it done. Um, this is a special permit application. I expect anything else that would go into this space would be another special permit application. I can't believe the landlord isn't going to try and do something. But um, you know, I don't know if we close this, he'll have any incentive. Can I just uh, mention a couple of things, Steve? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, with 
but I put this picture back up of the rear. It does say unlined. I said, I thought I said unlined. I thought I said there were 27 lined spaces on the other side of this property, on the restaurant end of the building. And, and about 10, somebody must have figured out that there were unlined, about 10 unlined spaces on this end of the property. So that may have been uh, a little bit of confusion, and I hope I clarified it. Uh, your, narrative says, your narrative says eight. Your narrative says eight. Your narrative says 27 plus eight equals 35. So what's your point? I was responding to George. Okay. Who thought, well, that's thought I said there were line spaces back here, and there, there, there aren't, obviously. Yeah, the dumpster, right. I, may have that. Right. I may have. I don't know. Yeah, the dumpster seems to be a site plan issue that can be resolved, as um, uh, Eric has said. Uh, we'll somehow get that dumpster taken care of to the staff's uh, uh, satisfaction. It, regarding the special permit, every use in the NB zone requires a special permit. Everything, no matter what it is, a retail store, anything. Uh, there are no of right uses in this zone. Um, so we're here because of that and probably because of the unique nature of the NB zone. Personal service business has a wide range of things and it includes incidental retail connected to the basically the personal service business. And some of the things in the definition are a fitness studio, day spa, craftsman. Um, so that's how this fits in. Personal service is also a special permit use in the central business district. The commission approved it informally uh, in response to a letter from the landlord over there. So uh, I'm not sure how um, how this has been done. I'm sorry, we, we approved it informally when? Uh, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. We approved what? We approved this business going in. Oh, and this business, this business. At, at 22 Grove Street as technically a special permit use, but there was no formal application and no public hearing or anything. I'm just saying this happens to be one of those areas where everything is a special permit. It, well, we're trying to decide if we can close right. this or not. Right, and so now they're finally so applying for the special permit. Oh, I got, you. I got you. So we can, if Eric can, can give you a maximum number of class size for now, uh, that'll help close it. The uh, <laughs> I got it, Bob. Bob, I got it. All right, all right. Um, Urgent. Okay, Erica, can you give them a, a number? Jesus. A I mean, class I mean, size number? Yeah, let's go with 20, which is an elementary class size. I can't. So it's for, for a party, it's 20 kids plus instructors. So there's yeah. two adult, there's two adult instructors and two, te not, two We'd teenagers. Have two Two assistants, so it's twenty kids plus four instructors, right? Say yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then, with regards to the maximum class size for kids after school, it's twelve. Um, post COVID would be fifteen. Well, we so care about post COVID. Yeah, let's go with fifteen. Okay, and one instructor. And one and what apprentice. About one apprentice. Okay, so it's fifteen. It's fifteen kids, one instructor, which is Nicole, and one apprentice. Okay, for the adult classes that are at night. Uh, the well, the adult classes is eight. They they've averaged about eight. They no, they tend to be no. We're going maximum. We're talking maximum. I would say maximum. Let's go with fifteen. Fifteen adults. The graphic, the application says four to eight. That, wow, that's, what'd you do? that's been our typical, but if we want to prepare for really what could be the full max max, I would say to be safe, 15. Right, but what I said to you earlier was we could start at a number like eight and you can come back okay. in a year and say our business is booming, can we raise it? And yeah, if nobody I, yeah. complains and Giuseppe, the guy who owns Papa Joe's doesn't care, and you move this dumpster to the other side, which I bet you Nickley's going to say no. Um, 
then then oh, everybody's happy. Yeah. No, I'm yeah, trying to get you to crawl. I'm trying to get you to crawl before you walk. Right. No. So aid would be more than accommodating for us, I think, for an evening. Okay. So what else is on here? Do we adult classes at night? That's that's Wednesday nights. You got adult classes. So adult classes on Wednesday night. Can we just use the numbers off of this piece of paper? And Thursday. What's that? And Thursday nights. Right, so, so you said 15 kids, which is on your Wednesday, Thursday. school year schedule. You said eight adults is on your school year schedule. And you said 10 adults on Thursday nights, Tuesday nights, and Wednesday nights. Does it ever get bigger than that? Not, we, we haven't had interest for that, no. We're just trying to set maximums. If you have interest, then you can come back in two years and say our business is killing it. We want more. All right. So this application, we can use the numbers that are in the application, which is these two pieces of paper. Yes. Thank you. The only thing we have to add is the birthday party. Okay. We can decipher and, and debate on whether they're coming in the front, they're going in the front door but they can drop off in the back and walk around the side like we did with um, like we did with Kumon and we did that with Kumon and Huntington Learning Center. Can we, why don't we use their word, verbiage, which I think was like special events, which I think would include birthday parties, right? To maybe include other, give them a little bit more flexibility. Like, I mean, if your birthday party might just be like, I don't know, I have no idea, but I don't have girls, so mm -hmm. I, I'm sure boys do the activities too, but I would love my boys too. Um, but like just to like make it that it's not just like kids birthday parties maybe like some you know adults you know want to do an event there or something but i think yeah they do know. special events they do special events at the butcher shop where they have 30 oh, people that's there my point. yeah 10 o'clock at night i know that's fine right, yeah. but we're gonna max we're gonna max them we're gonna put a, a cap on it that's all but you can't have a special event with adults on a wednesday night and 25 people and papa joe's open at the same time Totally that's, agree. That's, totally. that's where it doesn't it, it doesn't jive. No, I think if that was the premise, then I think keeping the meeting open would be the avenue. Unless, but I think the baby steps, right? The big, yes. And then coming back to amend if that's necessary to allow right. them to begin to operate, you know, and take you know book classes now rather than having to wait. We're at the right. only time that yeah. The only time they have the adult workshop or something. All right. Okay, so but let's go back to the circle. Are we closing this tonight or are we leaving it open? I, I want to say for parking plan, so I'm voting no, not to close. I got you. That's I I, I respect that hundred percent. Jim Rand. I uh open or close. Yes, yeah, Larry, I I I'd be more than happy to close it tonight. Kara? I, I'm happy to close it tonight. Jim. Close tonight. Okay. All right. We're going to uh, entertain a motion to close. We're probably, it's probably going to be five to one or four to one. Okay. Somebody give me a motion to close. Do we, are you, you all done. I got everything, right, Jeremy yeah. and Fred? I'll make a motion to close. Okay. That's Bob, okay. you're finished, right? Just, just one thing. If they, no, oh, two seconds. Come on, Bob. The window. The window for open, the window for starting classes is September twenty first. Can they start booking? Well, we got to close the hearing first. I Let got that, the, but I can't talk after you close the hearing. That's that's the. I don't want you to talk. Okay. All right. Okay. Let the ladies talk. They know what's going on. It's the most. When so you got Larry started, made a motion to <laughs> Hey, Larry made a motion close. Kara seconded. All those in favor. Aye. Okay, hearing's closed. Great. All right, ladies, if we get to this tonight, we're going to deliberate tonight. If, if Bob keeps talking, we're not going to get it to it tonight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Holy cow. It is now ten, almost, it's five to 10. There's no way we're getting to this tonight. Uh, okay, moving on. Postal Slide Plan Review number 327A, Flood Time Prevention Application number. 376A, landfilling and regreening application number 379A, Cordy and William Platt, 43 Contentment Island. Proposal construct 
and it's all an in-ground swimming pool spa and associated powder areas and to perform related site development activities within the regulated areas, including regrading of the property and installation of a rain garden and landscaping. The 1.22 acre plus or minus site is located on the south side of Contentment Island Road, approximately uh, a quarter of a mile south of its intersection with Shenamir Road, and is shown on assessor's map number 68 as lot number 16 in the R1 zone. Okay, this is the plot house on Contentment Island. They want to put in a pool. Wagner Wagner Cup Wagner is putting is designed a pool to put it in there. It looks like there's some ledge rock that might be there. They can decide if it's going to be blasted out or chipped out. Um, the, we approved the Wagner pool earlier this year. Jeremy and Fred, want to just explain this to us? What do we got here? Sure, this is a just a coastal site plan. There's no work in the flood zone. There's no regrading. The, the pool is very narrower, narrower than usual to try to fit it in between the ledge. The terrace area, the paved terrace is very small, right up against the house. And that pool is pretty much centered on the property as far away from mean high water pretty much as possible. I mean, it's an odd shaped lot. I spoke to the applicant, Sean Walters today and we talked a little bit about the proposed chipping of the ledge which is needed a little bit for the pool sean tells me that that chipping can it will be about a week maximum hopefully a little less and they're doing it just to the basic extent to squeeze that pool in there so they are aware there is some chipping but the way they've designed it is to keep it to a minimum there was a coastal report done by hudson engineering consulting uh, Part of the pool is in the flood zone, so they're going to have to submit engineering when they get the building permit for the pool. Uh, so Sean can hear, talk to you a little bit about any other questions you have, but it's a narrow pool very close to the existing house. Thank the you, Jeremy. Number of My uh, whole the presentation. Thing I, the only thing I want to add to that is that for the commissioner's edification, Jeremy also said it's a very small patio on this thing. The reason why it's a small patio because there's a big patio right next to it. So you don't have to build two patios. Exactly. Exactly. And then the last thing before I hand it off to Sean Walters, um, Jeremy, just tell me the difference between chipping and hole ramming. Uh, I would say chipping is pretty much more like hole ramming than blasting. Okay. Sean said they, they will not be doing any blasting. Got it. Okay. Uh, take it away, Sean Walters, please. Hey, good evening. Hey, thank you for your time. Uh, it's late, so I'm going to get through this really quickly. Uh, Jeremy did most of my presentation for me. I uh, outlined some of the finer points of what's going on. The pool is actually located over 400 feet away from mean high tide. And as Jeremy stated, it's in the middle of a 1.2 acre lot, uh, as opposed to closer to one of the edges where it would be more disruptive to a neighbor. Uh, that would be the construction process or the pool itself. The entire rear uh, lot per the test pits by Hudson Engineering uh, is mostly clay with, uh, with, with subs, you know, pockets of ledge underneath. So the pool itself being in the rear yard is not going to be taking up a space that may otherwise have been used for a septic reserve system, which was an earlier comment uh, from somebody in the town that I saw. Uh, so basically we're not uh, taking away that type of space there. The deep end of the pool, is located downhill from the residence. Uh, that's uh, gonna minimize or reduce roughly two feet worth of rock chipping if we have to rock chip. We don't know yet if that's actually the case, but you will see that the pool is uh, has been narrowed considerably. It's a narrow form that was done to favor the ledge nearby and to reduce uh, the environmental impact and the possibility uh, of the rock chipping itself. So we don't actually know that this is gonna have to happen. There's a good chance. Uh, there's an engineered rain garden due to the uh, poor drainage in the rear yard also and that's between the pool and the shared access driveway with uh, the owner's neighbor
Sean, I think that pretty much covers the issues we discussed earlier today on the phone, right? Yes. I can open okay. the plans on my desk and walk you guys through it if you want. Or uh, it, it, I, I think it's all right. Um, uh, George Riley, any questions on this one? No, sir. Done. Where's the voice of reason? Where's Larry Warble? There he is. Uh, no questions here. Uh, where's my Marine guy, Jim Rand? <clears throat> yeah, I have no, I have no questions. Thanks. Anything near the water, you got it. You're the Marine guy. But where's Kara? She's still there. There's Kara. Hey, Kara. No oh, questions. You didn't. You went like this. That's not a good thing. All right. Thank you. Um, pretty much a straight pool on a side yard. It's got some chipping going on, and they can dig a big hole. Right? It's, it's, it's a big piece of dirt. Um, and is anybody in the public like to speak to this application? You got anybody in the chat box, Fred? No, no one. Okay. Anything I missed? No. Okay. I don't think I so. Okay. Entering a, enter a motion to close. That's Jim Rand and George Riley seconded. Kara thirded. All those in favor? Close. Thank you. Appreciate it, Sean. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Next up. Um, what do we got here? Landfilling and regulating application number um, 484, Wolf and Christine Oben, 9 Archer Lane. Proposal to regrade portions of the backyard to construct two retaining walls from site related activities. The 0.45 acre subject property is located on the north side of Archer Lane, um, approximately 325 feet from its intersection of Fitch Avenue. It's shown in the Sester map number 42 is lot 113 in R13 zone. This to me, this is a house that's very near the town hall, so we probably drive by it a lot and don't even know it. Um, it looks like it's one of those flattening of the backyards for a soccer player. Um, Fred and Jeremy, what do we got? <clears throat> yeah, so this one is um, a very tight backyard at a low point. So if you go back there and take a look at some of the surrounding properties, they're at a much higher elevation from the back. So you have some drainage issues uh, when storm water comes down. The applicant is having problems with water at the foundation, flooding in the backyard. So the proposal is to uh, cut out a, a portion of the backyard and move the retain the existing retaining wall closest to the closest to the back of the house, further away from the house and then create an additional retaining wall at the rear of the property uh, to create more of a flat yard and allow the water to essentially come down the hill and have the opportunity to dissipate and and drain into the ground in that area um, so all work is really to alleviate flooding problems and, and concerns that the homeowner has had over the years. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. We have Mr. Oben here, uh, who is the homeowner, and he's available to answer any questions that, that you may have about this application. Okay, so we're making a, a new tiered backyard and moving the rock wall back from where existing is further back into the woods and into the lawn on basically two sides? That's correct, yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Oben, thank you for your time um, and be, your patience in waiting. It's now 10 o'clock. Uh, would you just like to explain it or add anything to the application, sir? Well, I, Fred, I think, gave it a pretty good description. Um, the problem is, is you step out from the back door of the house, the, the area that's immediately behind the house is very close and it's not properly graded. In certain areas, the grade goes into the house rather than grading away from the house. So we're, we're optimistic that we can remove the existing stone that creates the terraced yard, um, carve out some area and re-devote uh, that soil to the terraced area to grade that properly because that also slopes down to the house. 
and we want to try and correct that and regrade that terrace area. And at the back of the terrace area, there's presently a, a wood retainer, which is deteriorating and will not hold up uh, over the course of time. So we want to replace that with a uh, dry stone wall. All the wall, all the stone work will have uh, behind it the um, landscape permeable fabric with uh, gravel to uh, ensure that any water that comes down to it will go down to the ground and per percolate into the ground uh, and should not overflow over the rock uh, wall. Okay. How high, do you think, how high do you think these walls are going to be? Less than three feet or less than definitely less than four feet, right? Well, yeah. As I put in the as I put in the uh, in the write up, we expect them to be between two and three feet in height, depending on where it is in the wall because of the the topography. Right. Okay. We also have in the plan uh, to above the terraced yard uh, place a, a berm to try and go with the contour of the land and, and catch the water uh, just and spread the water out and allow it to percolate down into the soil. Um, I think the engineer's report uh, didn't take, uh, didn't have a positive uh, reaction to that, um, but we're open minded about it. Uh, we we considered that to be just another line of defense, if you will, but I think the heavy lifting is going to be done by the uh, stone walls and the uh, permeable fabric and gravel in, behind the stone wall to catch that water. And of course, the regrading. Uh, we want to make sure that we grade regrade this this soil directly, uh, budding to the foundation to uh, grade away from the house, which is not the case right now in order to get the water away from the house, uh, you know, during during rain. Um, thank you. Um, Jeremy and Fred, do we need a map with topo lines on this thing? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, Darren, Ostefan, uh, Darren Ostefan re reviewed the application. Uh, just to clarify Mr. Oben's statement with respect to the, the uh, berms, the proposed berms, at the back of the property. Um, he did state in his comments, which uh, you have included as part of your packets in front of you this evening, that those berms do have the potential to catch some of that water and potentially, uh, you know, the, the portion of the water, water that doesn't soak into the ground in that area does have the potential to follow those berm areas towards some of the adjoining properties. Um, so yes, that, that was a concern of the town engineer. Um, however, the, 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 real, the grade of the property itself is really not being changed by much. Um, it's moving that, re, that retaining wall closest to the house back so they're going to cut out i think mr oben had indicated in the range of 20 to 25 yards to cut that out move the retaining wall back and then use that cut to create the flatter backyard it is it is pretty flat back there now but to use that fill those 20 yards of fill and cover the rest of the backyard with that and slope it slightly towards so the water would run off towards the back or towards the back of the property instead of down towards the foundation of the house. Right. And then just make sure make sure that just make sure it doesn't flow onto the neighbor's properties, right? Right. Because the contour lines are, are, are in the exhibit, which is from the, our town website. That's correct. I got you. <laughs> so the 113 is, is a high point. Okay. Um, commissioners, let's go to ladies first. Carrie, any questions? Um, no, go. no questions. I mean, I obviously, 
um, took note of what Mr. Ostafine wrote in his email concerning this. And I believe the homeowner and the you know, homeowner slash applicant and um, Fred sort of uh, elaborate on the points, which is, you know, is there a way or are we going to be considering or will the applicant be considering in what he's doing, the changes that he's making, mitigating and, you know, hopefully not sending water runoff, which, right, he's doing this to prevent water from flowing towards his foundation of his home. Like, we don't want to be doing things, obviously, that will be sending that water to other people's foundations in their homes. Um, and it seems to me that the applicant, Mr. Oven, was cognizant and sort of conscious of that. And so um, it seems like it's not necessarily going to happen with this design and plan. But obviously, that's that's my concern. And so any additional, you know, elaboration on that, you know, or, 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 or things that can be done to alleviate it without, you know, addition, too much additional cost or work or uh, disruption, you know, I would hope would be considered. Okay. Uh, Jim Rand, you're on it all. Uh, my my uh, hat's off to Kara. She understood Darren's email. I, I can't make heads or tails of it. Uh, I'm referring specifically to the third bullet. I don't frankly know what it means. Um, uh, it says, if current drainage pattern is not desirable, water could be diverted to underground storage in an acceptable area or overland flow could be diverted around the house with water diverted to another portion of the subject site. Is he saying this is what he wants to be done or I think is what he's saying, saying, you see if you don't put in Coltex, you can divert the water. Coltex are expensive. Right. Right. He's suggesting several potential alternatives to having the berms in the back of the property. So you could install Coltex in the backyard or some sort sort of uh, detention in the backyard that would that would hold storm water or you could grade the property in such a way that it would direct water to another part or the front of the property, which would be a third alternative, essentially. Um, all of these alternatives end up being very costly. But something has to be done if this is not gonna dump the, the uh, runoff uh, to somebody else's backyard. Or yeah, that's a concern. Okay, uh, Larry, any questions there? I, I just echo all those comments. Yeah, that's what I thought. George? Um, first, just so the record's clear, uh, the chairman referred to uh, what he thought was an elevation of 113. That's actually a lot number, I think, on the town map. Just so the, uh, you are 100% correct, sir. Thank yeah. you. Just for the record. Um, so, <laughs> so are we kind of leaving it to the applicant to figure out the best way to do it? Is that what we're doing here? It, well, sir, have you, have you have you engaged a contractor yet that's going to do this, or have you consulted with a contractor? Yes, I am working with a landscaper on this project, and um, he he feels confident that if we can level out that terraced yard and channel the water to go, not down but left and right in a slow grade to help channel that water and do the same in the immediate area off the back of the house. Um, that that would answer for a lot, as well as again, I would repeat the uh, the stone walls with the with the gravel uh, to catch the water. Uh, he feels strongly that the um, berm will catch quite a bit of water as well and uh, we can install it so that it would disperse the water and help it to percolate down to the ground we could put a swale in be in front of the berm to make it a little bit wider in order to hold that water and keep it from going down uh, any further into the other adjoining properties uh, i would say that we have as i mentioned in the the write-up a number of very mature trees in the backyard um, only one of which we're, we're planning on taking down. It's, and it's not a mature tree. 
Uh, it's what I call an adolescent tree. But the mature trees, um, there's three of them that are about three foot in diameter that are on or very close to the border with the uh, neighbor on the downslope. And those trees are, are soaking up a huge amount of water, I'm sure. Um, and the other issue I would say is that the the slope of the property right now is what it is, and water is flowing down that property now. And it is, as you can see from the topography, it does move um, towards the neighbor. And I asked them, you know, are they getting much water now? And they didn't seem to indicate that they were. Um, and I, I certainly have no intention of, of making matters any worse than what they are. In fact, I am pretty optimistic we can do a much better job, and that is our yeah, intent. Yeah. Right. You're not allowed to make it worse. You can't make it better. <laughs> That's against the law. I had just read Mr. Ostefan's memo as a little more affirmative that it was going to create more water running off to adjacent properties. The second bullet point really says that. But uh, I, I, um, I don't want to make a, a bigger project out of this than necessary. I think uh, everybody knows what needs to be accomplished here. So I'm, I'm not going to object. Mr. Ostafine clearly indicates in his comments that the drainage pattern will be altered as a result of the proposal in front in front of you tonight. the The drainage patterns will be altered as a result of those berms at the back of the property. If the commission is not comfortable with the applicant altering the drainage patterns and potentially shedding water to the adjoining properties. But then, is that what he's saying? Is that, is that what he's saying? Is it's going to alter the drainage patterns, but it alter it in a good way or alter it in a bad way? That's the question. I think he's saying it's going to be altered onto the adjacent property. Increasing runoff to adjacent properties is the second bullet point. Yes, it certainly has the potential to increase runoff to adjoining properties. Okay, Jim Ray, you got a point? Yeah, I mean, should we, I, with greatest respect to Mr. Oban and his landscaper and whatever, do we need uh, some expert view that, that at minimum, this is not gonna make things worse as far as the neighbors, neighbors are concerned? That was what Topo was looking for. Hmm. Sorry. I, I, that's the why I asked that question at the beginning. Do we need a tow pole? You know, I'll repeat what I said earlier. If if the engineer and the judgment of the commission is such that they are uncomfortable with the idea of a berm, then I am more than willing to eliminate that from the plan. Now, where is the, on on the the berm the transition? Presumably, if the, if the berms are eliminated from the plan, the existing drainage patterns would be maintained, according to the according to Darren Ostafine. But does does that defeat the purpose of uh, the point bullet point two? It's what you're talking about. Yeah, I agree with you guys. But it would be slowed by the new walls with the. Uh, uh, pervious uh, fabric or whatever it is behind the wall and so water would now filter down there and so there'd be less water coming toward the house even though it'd be going in the same direction as it is now is that the idea yes we believe so um the landscaper is very confident in the in his work with regards to the walls and the uh, control of water uh, flowing behind the walls as it comes down from the hillside um, so that's that's where we believe really the heavy lifting is going to occur on the water coming down the slope. As I mentioned earlier, the the idea of the of the berm was just an added uh, measure, if you will, but it's it's not something that we're uh, you know married to. Great. Did okay. Jeremy? Do they pull? A, do you guys pull a building permit on this? Does somebody babysit while it's under construction? Uh, I don't believe that. Jeremy, Jeremy are muted, um, but I, 
there would not be a building permit required for this work um, and it, and, unless the wall is, is more than four feet in height. That's correct. It would just be something that uh, if, it, if it gets approved, Mr. Oban would call us when his contractor is about to start work. We would kind of check the erosion controls, check it sporadically during while the work was being done, uh, but there would be no building permit needed. All right, but you're checking it sporadically while the building's being done, and you check the erosion controls, the, the silt fencing and whatnot before they get started. Right? That's correct. Okay, so somebody's get a quote unquote babysit it while it's under construction. Somebody will swing by once or twice. Yes, we will certainly swing by. By certainly the fact that it's a block from town hall will make it easier to swing by. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Open, they're going to be there every week. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. We 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 invite the, all the input we can get because we really want to try and do this correctly. We don't want to impose anything on the neighbors at all, certainly, and we do want to try and protect our house. I mean, that is our and our intent here is to protect our property as well. Understood. Understood. Let's open it up to the general public and see if anybody out there would like to speak to this application. Do you have anybody in your queue, Fred? You have no, a couple. Have no. Nobody wants to speak to this application. Okay. Um, all right, commissioners, do we want to close this tonight? Larry saying yes. Yeah, Kay, all you want to yeah. You're all done, Mr. Oban, correct? Are you all done? Yes, I have nothing further to add. Okay, Jeremy and Fred, you guys are okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, guys, do we want to close this or do you want to get a topo, man? Commissioner Jim? Kara? I, I don't understand the term you just used. To, a, a, a topography map. Oh. So Will I answer the drainage question? It's going to give you the cut and fail the before and after. That's that's by an engineer. It takes time, that's for sure. Right. I mean, my feeling is if he's well, I mean, the, the berm seems to be the issue. And if there's no berm, there's no issue. Right. We I can take the berm else. out. We take the berm out in the resolution, and then our guys are going to go there, watch it while it's under construction. All right. Good. George? Uh, I I would like um, I think it's best to take the berm out and move this along. Okay, Kara, are you okay with that? If they're okay with taking the berm out, then I would be in favor of closing the hearing on this application tonight. If if they were thinking let's keep it in, then I would be in favor of keeping it open and requiring a topography report. Okay, so. The, the recommendation is going to be, Mr. Oban, that we'll close the hearing tonight, but when you get the resolution, I'm going to ask you to take the berm out, and then the town hall engineers and, and professionals will monitor the site while it's under construction. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Um, with that said, I'd intend a motion to close. I think that's Kara saying yes. Yep, she did. And Larry seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Oban. Appreciate your Thank time. You. All right, Have a good evening. Song. All right, you too. Uh, let's see if we're moving forward. Number six. Uh, all right, it's taken. It's now 10:22. How late do you guys want to go? Because we have one more application, then we got the general meeting. We need. We definitely need to get to the general meeting because we got to talk about the um, the. Uh, temporary um closing of, of, of the things all right so let's plow forward and see how much we can do we can probably do both general meeting items all right next up this is coastal site plan review number 129a flood damage prevention application number um 127a david and kareem austin at 76 hourhead Proposal to remove an existing dock on the property and construct and install a new dock in the same location consisting of a fixed pier and an attached ladder uh, and to perform related site development activities within a regulated area. The 1.14 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the west side of Arrowhead Way, approximately 325 feet south of its intersection of Canoe Trail 
and is shown on assessor's map number 70 as lot number 48A is an apple and is located in an R1 zone. Okay, this is a, um, a proposed dock that's off of Delafield Island and it's, you know, a, 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 a thing over from Scotts Cove. Um, so it's another, we've seen a gazillion of these the last couple of years. An old dock's taking out a new dock. Um, Jeremy and Fred, what do we got? This is a very straightforward application. It's an in-kind replacement of the existing dock. There's an old wooden dock uh, on the property now. The uh, prop applicant and property owner proposes to remove that dock and install a new dock in exactly the same location, same length, no float, just a pier with a ladder at the end the pier may be a half a foot or a foot wider than the existing pier but otherwise very straightforward in-kind replacement what we have so uh, david yeah, austin with us this evening who is the property owner and applicant if you have any questions for him he's available to answer questions all right uh, mr austin this is your old duck Right. Yes, I think they refer. I think I think you may refer to that as the derelict old dock. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> I want to put in a new one. Yes. Uh, um, so the, this, as 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 Fred mentioned, there is um, just to highlight, it is a replacement of the existing dock to, you know, precisely the same length. Uh, just for the benefit of everyone here, it is as Fred mentioned, it is going to be wider um then what is existing uh, i think existing is like a little over three feet it'll go to four feet which is i'm told is standard but you probably know better than i do um uh, you know with the marine grade materials similar to the docks uh or the piers surrounding it's probably good COVID, it's covid wide enough for two passing lanes yeah. <laughs> there you go now because because this doesn't really have a float there's no dep stuff right uh de so this is all new to me um there is dep and um army corps of engineers i got an email tonight from jamie sidoriak at dep and i think they they take over everything from mean high watermark onward um right. it appears to me that she is just awaiting a signature um you know, without putting words in her mouth, uh, this was like the final stages. It appears very, very likely they approve both. They, you know, she approves it, and Army Corps of Engineers. The feedback I've gotten is this would be approved. Yeah, we usually see these after those guys approve them. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah, it's weird. I, you know, I think uh, Jamie is relatively new. Um, I've been working with Jim Bajak, and this has been somewhat of a frustrating process because. She wanted to make sure that I was on the docket to uh, meet with you folks before she would take it to her boss. So um, once again, I'm learning as I go and Jim seems frustrated, but there was a little bit of chicken and egg here to your point, Stephen. Yeah, you're only doing one of these in your career, I bet. So I, got I, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Um, any questions? Jim Rand's always the first one because he's a Marine guy. The commission's approval would, of course. <laughs> you need Jim Rand's approval to do anything. <laughs> you good, Jim? Yep. Uh, George Riley? Uh, I think someone was about to say, obviously, our approval would be conditioned on DEEP. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. Yes. No reason. Derek asked if it has no, no issues at all. Um, Larry Warble? No questions. Okay. Um, anybody in the general public like to speak to this application? I don't see anybody else. Um, Fred and Jeremy, did I miss anything? Uh, no, uh, I nope, think, it I think you covered. Was it neighbor Ms. Reynolds was in the meeting earlier. Um, but no other comments were submitted for the record. Okay. 
It looks like a pretty straightforward thing. I mean, I can't. See. Yeah, Reynolds, actually, Reynolds would actually like to say we would be very happy to see that replaced, and it'll look fantastic. So the adjoining neighbors are happy. And sorry that Mr. Austin has to deal with the morons at deep, but I have, my <laughs> yes, uh, have fun. Uh, that's All right. right. Thank you for your time, Mr. Reynolds. Um, so I'm um, hearing no other comments. I intend a motion to close. I think it's Jim Rod's uh, Kara Gailey's turn again. Jim Rod's got to second it. Yeah, there you go. All right, all in favor? Thank you, Mr. Austin. Thank appreciate you all. Your I appreciate your consideration. No problem. All right, um, that is the end of the public hearings, I think. Yeah, that's the end of the public hearings. Okay. Um, now let's move into the general meetings. It's now 1031. Um, my wife's going to go, wants to go to bed soon, so. I'm talking too loud. Um, general, dis it's a discussion with regards to possible extension of temporary allowance for outdoor seating for restaurants and outdoor retail sales due to COVID-19 crisis pursuant to Governor Lamont's executive orders 7MM and 7000. Um, as you guys remember, and I, I will firmly say that I got quote unquote outvoted um, we voted or had to have this outdoor seating through Labor Day Tuesday, which is tomorrow. Uh, no, next week. Um, I thought we were going to be out of this by by the 4th of July. I was dead wrong. Um, now these things are, are expiring. I had a bunch of conversations with restaurateurs and landlords. Um, they would like this extended. Um, the last conversations I had with those people through November 1st, um, there's going to be issues when you get into tents and sidewalls and whatnot um, and heating and coldness and who wants to sit outside and freezing cold. I've said enough about that. I, I think Jeremy and Fred can speak to it, but I think that Governor Lamont's most recent extended the outdoor seating to November 12th. Um, Kara yeah. is keeps your handle on this. Um, so if ours expire next Tuesday, which is a week from today, we should at least extend them to um, November 12th. Everyone that I've spoken to is so appreciative that we did it in the first place. Um, but I don't want to make it, you know, November 1st or something like that. They need the, the restaurant tours need to know we need to be able to extend it. So with that said, Jeremy or Fred, you want to add to that? And we can take a quick vote to extend it to some place. I would agree. There, there was, uh, as you get further into winter and cold weather, there's a number of issues that commission members have brought up to me about snow removal, heaters, other items. So I think the fact that the governor has used November 12th seems to be a logical point for us to go to next. And certainly as it gets closer, we can take it up at that time. But I think for the time being, going to November 12th is perfectly reasonable. Any questions or comments on that from anybody? Yes, Karen. I think, well, just a comment. I mean, the governor's order, right, and his extension, his application, or his, um, his, I don't know what the right word is, it's not petition, but his um, uh, executive order to extend his own executive powers um, unless the legislature acts to turn that down. It has been extended from September 9th through till February, 2021. He has issued before his initial, initial executive powers expires, this newest order, which clearly states that the extension of expanded outdoor dining shall be extended through November 12th, 2020. So I think, you know, I think that's a logical date and query whether we would be challenged if we did not so extend or whether, you know, it would be extended anyway. So I think in terms of mitigating litigation and making certainty for businesses, it's wise to extend it to that date to be consistent with the governor's order. I mean, I guess where my question, where, where I'm sort of a little concerned is we delegated you know, authority for approval to staff, you know, for sort of like business, you know, restaurants and different things. And I guess where I'm concerned is um, businesses that don't serve food 
and only serve alcohol, providing approval for outdoor seating and sort of um, uh, approving just outdoor consumption of alcohol, um, that's a bit concerning to me. And I feel like applications like that that aren't sort of um, you know, the run of the mill restaurant or retail, I think maybe should come before the commission. And um, that would sort of be like the issue that I would raise about that. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, issues, the issues in our town are a little bit different than some of the other towns. Um, and part of it's because of a, a lot of our parking is municipal parking. You know, we, nobody knows where the snow is going to go, and I want to get to your point in a second, Kara. No one knows where the snow is going to go. The other issue with these tent things is, if it gets so cold, you got to put flaps on them because it's windy. You know, then is it? It does all of a sudden they become indoor seating. The building department guy was worried about some restaurant tour putting in a one of those heat things. You know, with the propane heat things under a tent and burning the tent down. So that's where the other issue is, relative to alcohol being served outside you know solely uh, alcohol yeah Not, it's I, alcohol with food is one thing alcohol and sort of you know not considering just open container <laughs> i mean you know how many you, people you don't want to tell you don't want to tell you behind 10 20. no i don't i don't think that. no, i don't you know I mean that that's liquor control board. That's kind of sort of out of our hands. I mean, if somebody no, else no, like, no, I think we have a role in like approving, you know, open consumption of alcohol without consumption of food on roads and in parking lots. All right. So what, what do we want to do? What place serves only liquor? That would only be Shea Ernie, and he's he's not allowed to operate anyway. We. Uh, uh, it was, approved by three. Three. Okay. it was approved it was approved but not approved by the state the state said no right. like we i don't know if we should have approved that maybe I'm, hey, i sorry. might be an outlier here and that's just my opinion there right. is a bar so, out beside um behind um upper crust bagels it's part of the mexican restaurant next door that's bodega that's a restaurant it's called the Tequila Garden, or the anybody? Then, That's Bodega. You know where That's... UCBC is? Yeah. Upper Crust Bagel. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Mexican restaurant next door. Bodega. That's Bodega. Bodega. All right. Bodega has a big place under a tent for food. Yes. And a little place right next to the big tent. For just serving tequilas or right. whatever. So, I mean, it's already going on. Whether it's the, the thing that concerns me, I don't. I'm not so concerned about the date. I am concerned about these heaters. Mm -hmm. um, right. I mean, somehow we got to get the fire department roped into this so that they it, are. No, they're in the loop. They're, those guys are in the loop. They're already in the loop. Jeremy and I it, it attached those guys to an email and they're already in the loop. And and same with the Board of Health guy. He wouldn't commit because he said, hey, listen, COVID's day to day, week to week. Uh, you know, don't ask me about Thanksgiving because I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen next week. And the guy's right. And the fire department guy said the same thing. He said, you know, I don't know what we're going to do with these things. And then do you put flaps on the side of them? Do you not flaps on the side? You know, that's why I don't want to go too long because all that other weather issues kick in. And we have had snow in October. I still remember that nightmarish. It was Thanksgiving. Halloween. Yeah. Halloween in October. Remember that Halloween snowstorm? Yeah, I remember. So can I, we extend it? I'd, I'd yeah. like to see a motion that we extend it to November 12th. Before we go ahead and do that, I would just like to remind the commission that we're talking about outdoor dining here, but uh, this would also apply to retail sales as well. And I just want to clarify yeah. that. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. yeah. 
Did you did you make that motion, Jim or George? George did. I Anybody get a second? I'll we'll second it. Jim? Okay. All those in favor? Extend outdoor dining, retail, sales, and services to August to November twelfth. Great. Done. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, uh, let's do this one. It's now ten forty. Uh, Coastal Slab Program Review Application Number three seventy one. Uh, landfilling and regrading application number uh, 412 Leary. It's 10 Seagate Road. Request extension of time to install the new foundation. I call this Gene Cross Daughters Rental House. This is the one that's on the pond. They came back once already. They've come back a number of times. Uh, they, uh, in this case, COVID has caused them some problems with the sale of their existing house. They didn't want to get started with the new foundation this winter october november december they're looking to an extension till april 30th 2021 to get started on the foundation uh in light of what the governor has said i'm not sure they even need the extension from the commission but i thought i would put it on your agenda and if, if you vote to extend it to april 30th uh they've committed to me that they're ready to go march and get started with this thing okay we, it's, it's, you got a COVID issue going on. The last time they had a financing issue, they moved the pool or something like that. We always approve these things unless it gets egregious and it goes for years. And I don't think we're at that point yet. No. So I think your motion to approve to March 30th, 2021. Is that what you said? April 30th. April 30th, 2021. I see Larry said yes. Carrie, mm -hmm. you give me a second. Carrie's giving us a second. All those in favor? Okay, I will. Thank you. Great. Okay, it's now 1041, 1042. Uh, we have one, two, three, four draft resolutions to go through. Um, you guys want to tackle these things for another 20 minutes? 10 minutes. Or you want to, how much more time do I want to put into this? So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing yes. All right, the first one, Kennedy's Barbershop. Uh, is that the first one? Yeah. Special I'm permit application number. Mr. Chairman, I'm tuning out of that one. Oh, yeah. oh you're, you're, you're recused? recused. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I forgot. Um, special permit application number 258A, Kennedy's Barber Club, um, 1071 Boston Post Road, proposed to accept a barber, barbershop and personal service establishment in a 1,333 square foot retail area within a portion of the building now created in the back of 1077 Boston Post Road, Darien Playhouse. This is the barbershop that we knew about that's in the new Darien Playhouse, which is under construction. Um, I don't think we had a whole, much, a whole lot of debate on this one because we knew it was coming. It's an existing business in town. Um, Karen, any typos, comments, questions? Um, uh, on that one, uh, no. Larry Warble? Nothing. You got the beard, man. You got to get in there. Wait, hold on. <laughs> 11.45. Jim Rand, any questions, comments on this one? I have no questions. I'm fine with it. Thank oh, Kara, you, sir. Kara, on this one, the, the minutes show you weren't at the meeting. Were you able to get caught up with the video? I did. I read everything okay, on the watch. Thank yep. you. So as you say you're okay, Kara, then you can make a motion to approve or submit it. Sure, I make a motion to approve. There you go. And Larry just seconded. I seconded. Jim Rand thirded. There Four to zero. Thank you. Or nothing. Next. Um, next is uh, um, landfilling. Uh, and thank you, George. Uh, George is back. Great. Landfilling and regaining application number um, eight four eighty three. Brenda. McNamara, 55 Maywood Road, proposes to regrade the center section of the existing backyard and perform related site development activities. Um, this one, I this one, I honestly don't remember. It's that they have a very sloped backyard and they're flattening. It's another soccer. Uh, it's another soccer. soccer field one, right? Yep, exactly. So they're flattening the backyard. There was some concern. Uh, by the commission regarding uh, drainage at the uh, 
shared property line. Uh, there was a condition in here. Let's see, I believe condition E on page three, the northeast almost 14 feet of gravel riprap along the north perimeter of the site as well as any old ADA, ADS pipe that runs along the stone wall in that location shall be removed from the site so as to avoid directing stormwater runoff onto the neighboring property to the north. So the commission spent some time discussing that. Uh, other than that, it was the construction of two new retaining walls on the property to uh, flatten out the backyard. Okay. Any edits, Chris Scribner's errors, questions, comments? No. Nope. Uh, Let's say Kara wants to approve this one too. Make a motion. Hey, motion. Said Jim Rand seconded. All those in favor? Thank you. Five zero. Thank you. I have nothing. What's up next? Um, Baywater. Um, special permit application number 313 Baywater. Um, 1025 Boston Post Road, LSC, Fire Bowls, 1025 Boston Post Road, establish, establish, proposal to establish a new 1,630 square foot quick service restaurant and a portion of the first floor formerly occupied by Kirby and Company. This is the one where they're going to put like a bar on the outside and the inside um, and some seating on the outside. Um, an a business that exists today up in Fairfield and a couple other ones. I want to let George Riley speak to this one first. Yeah, I hate to slow things down at all, but uh, I did not like this uh, prospect of young people lawyer, uh, being there for uh, several hours at a time and I think potentially cluttering the uh, sidewalk. Uh, I gather there'd be some chairs right there at the at the uh, window area, but then uh, you know I I see other people standing around those people in those chairs, uh, having whatever it is they like. I I, I don't like the notion of them um, loitering on that uh, parking lot, and I think the testimony was pretty clear. That's what they're expecting that uh, people will be there after school and whatnot, and spending some time there. And so I would rather that they not be outdoors or have that window arrangement that's like the, the guy did i mean in to, to the guy the guy said that people hang out there for three hours which kind of blew my mind um yeah. I, I i asked him if he misspoke <laughs> he didn't right. i don't know how you have a business model when someone sits there gets you know, you know so if i think it speaks so my 17 year old daughter is absolutely psyched I just, know that. just absolutely psyched. And as the father of a 17 year old girl, I want a nice place for her to hang out. That's where she's eating fruit bat bowls. <laughs> and all the other things that she might be doing as a 17 year old girl in downtown. So I think it's great. I, I, I fully support it. I, and, and I, and, and, I mean, and George, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I mean, I think your your concern is is, is legitimate, but in my mind, I I like the vibrancy of people, you know, kind of hanging out and and like you know, Darian being a place people want to be and hang, you know, and and coming in and, and a little bit of life in in, in the yeah. town. Our, you know, compared to the the, the towns around us, our, our our downtown is not that exciting, right? It's Route One. It's you know. Like, oh. <laughs> You go to New Canaan and it's awesome. Everyone's walking around, even though there's some of the other town, you know, Westport is a fantastic walking around area. So I, I actually kind of like the idea of, of people gathering and, you know, building a little vibrancy to the area, you know, but I, I totally respect what you're saying. I just come in at a different view. Yeah. And I appreciate that. And I, I, I would only embellish my comment by saying I don't think it's a very wide area of the sidewalk. And when you have some chairs there and some people hanging around behind them, I think it's going to block that sidewalk. Yeah, I don't disagree with it, but I think the landlord is should be smart enough to figure it out that he's not going to wreck his other businesses. Mm -hmm. Jim, any questions before I jump on the character? She's got a seven-year-old son, I think. Uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I've got a 16-year-old 
grandson, and if he hangs out there, maybe he'll meet Larry's <laughs> 19-year-old daughter, and things will be fine. So. We can only have a prom again. <gasps> yeah, exactly. Kara, any questions, comments, group reserves? I think, no. I mean, I echo, I think, to Larry's point, while, you know, there is a concern about kids loitering and hanging out on the post road. I think they're already doing it, right? Like, it, they have to be outside. They can't really be gathering together indoors, given a lot of the restrictions nowadays. And I think if we, you know, if we allow businesses that are hoping to create vibrancy and like healthy alternatives to other things that they could be doing um, in our downtown area, uh, and it's and it's in an environment that allows them to be outside as opposed to being crammed indoors in maybe not as well ventilated spaces. I think that's ideal. Um, and I have to echo Larry's thoughts. I mean, the amount of girls especially who are literally so beyond excited about pliables coming to Darien, I can't even tell you. Like this place is so popular. I, it's at Westport or Greenwich, or, or I don't even know where the other ones are, but I'm not yeah, really. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a healthy alternative. It's outdoors. It provides another opportunity for the community and and our young people to be, you know, socializing, but in an outdoor capacity. I think that's a really positive thing. Um, I mean, I was going to quibble about cooking versus heating, but I won't. And I won't be that annoying person, but like, yeah, I think if they're going to start cooking, and I think making oatmeal is cooking, not re you know, unless they're, I don't know, then they need to come back to us. That's it. All right. So, um, let me just because like I hate the notion of all the 17 year old ladies uh, <laughs> being displeased with me, but <laughs> it doesn't look like I'm going to sway anybody anyway. But mm -hmm. I would uh, say that if they weren't loitering at <clears throat> hanging, in front of the uh, uh, store, they go around the corner to the Grove Street Plaza where there's right, lots yeah. of space. Which they probably will, right? It's yeah, going to be more comfortable and nicer. Yeah, and you have to we're only talking about four chairs on the outside. Yeah. And the other were on the, like, so it's, you know, it's sort of like Bodega having a couple tables out in front. You, well, you and doesn't Sugar Bowl? Bagel has a couple tables out in front. And doesn't know. Sugar Bowl have? tables currently yeah, else has on both corners right. of the post like right on that side street where they're located but also extending to you yeah. know Stanley Kirby and company that's right they but did. for COVID we wouldn't be permitting a lot of that I suspect but um and but as I say given also, the given the numbers of people we're told to anticipate there are going to be those hanging around behind those seated at those uh, chairs so, anyway I said us Thank you. I got that. You're 100. I, I I do think that some people will walk across the street to the pocket park at at um at uh, go for ice cream, and I do think people will walk down the street and go to the Grove Street place too while eating their thing on their lap. You know, <laughs> so full of fruit. I would, I would take it. It's in a motion to approve the. Um, Larry. I will make. <laughs> I was approving this one. Jim Rand, can I get a second from you? He's your, 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 I think he's, he's muted, but I think he said yes. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Dad's got a 15 year old son. Those opposed? George? I have all my son. There you go. <laughs> all right. That's done. All right. All the girls are going to be like, <laughs> upset. <with you. laughs> all right. Uh, what are we doing next? Um, we got one more. We got six minutes left, sports fans. Coastal plan, site plan review number 315C is in Charlie. Flood damage, flood damage prevention application 361C is in Charlie. Landfilling and regrading application number 394B as in boy 53 Contentment Island LLC, 53 Contentment Road, and Deborah C. McLean at 45 Contentment Island joint application. Okay, this was an application to to shift the driveway. Remember, 
-hmm. No, it was the that area next to the driveway. It had a drainage yeah. problem. And yeah, the, and the lady was really psyched because the other guy was doing work on her property. And this, it, it was a two-part application. The second the part right. being being construction of the uh, storage shed in the in the cam review area. Right, and we we said that with the, it's going to be a really fancy looking storage shed to match the house, and it's only for yep. kayaks, and it's in a flood zone or a floodway. Right, and it's got it's got smart vents on it to let the stuff come in and out. We would never approve it if it was didn't if it had anything interior. Smart fence is when the water comes in, when the, the vent opens up, the water goes in, and the water uh, goes out, goes out. Oh, that's cool. Okay, thank you. That's a smart vent. It it makes sure the water goes out, not just stays in. Um, okay. Any questions, comments, typos, scribbler's errors? My son just got home too. It's eleven o'clock. He's on time. Uh, you guys must be doing a really good job. So still be in Florida. Say again. I said in six, six months we'll still be at Playa. <laughs> Sooner than that. <laughs> All right. Um, how about anyone want to make a motion to approve as drafted? George Riley, to get back to you on the on the on the good side. There he is. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. It's near the water, so Jim Rand's got a second it. <laughs> Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Fantastic. Aye, Thank you. All right. It's kind of quite um, interesting to learn that we, we as the government care whether someone has a kayak or a lawnmower in their shed. <laughs> <laughs> right. No um, lawnmower. <laughs> all right. So, really? I, I would venture to guess we're going to punt the deliberations, the things okay. that matter are clear tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would also venture to guess we're going to punt approval of the minutes because my neck is killing me. Yeah, um, and can I, I would... say that on the minutes for um, July 14th, all the mm -hmm. even pages were missing. This is oh, I'm sorry, what was missing? The even pages. I think it was just it was it was done um, double sided, but it, it it was just one side only. So all that. July 14th. Sorry about that. We'll get those to you next, next week. But just we're, right. we're punting that till next time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So punt the minutes. Um, Jeremy, do you have anything special you want to say for tonight? Nothing. Okay. I don't have anything special I might want to say tonight, but just so you guys know that five or six, the six chairman of the Playing Zoning Commissions, um, which is Darian, Greenwich, New Canaan, Ridgefield, Wilton, and Westport. We had another chairman's conference call today on Zoom, and it's all about this housing stuff and stuff that we're doing. And everyone still thinks people or that Darian's doing a great job. Um, we can talk about more the next time. It's 11 o'clock at night, but I wanted to make sure that you know it's the second conference call we had, and the other one was today. Um, so you guys know what I know, and we were on the phone for an hour and a half. But I was in my car driving from Rockland County or, or Sullivan County to here while they were talking. That's it. Um, anyone has any uh, questions? You can ask me offline. Uh, it's ten. A motion to close. Motion to close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is eleven fifty-eight. Uh, seconded by Kara. Clapping your hands. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great Bye. day. Thanks.